Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another wonderful Saints stream. And today we have two great games Very on display. Very great. But before we get into them, let's do some introductions. I'm Matthias, also known as Mothias, and it's Daniil Betterson mcgee How are you doing today? I'm doing great. You know, came in this morning, excited to get the smell of Apex Legends on my plate. It is <laughs> always a joy to see this on the docky for the stream. And, you know, I was hoping for an opportunity to get some casting done for Apex, and that opportunity presented itself. So I'm very excited to see what our Academy team has cooking up for us. They're yeah. always a pleasure to watch. Yes, and the league we're playing in today is the Octane Collegiate Apex Legends League. So yep. it's going to be a good one. And we have lots of games of Apex to go through today. We have three on World's Edge, and then we have three more on Stormpoint. So we've seen those maps before, but there's been a lot of changes in Apex as a of recently. Lot. <laughs> so it's become a little bit more almost like an RPG. We're keeping the same shield mechanics as the basis for your mm -hmm. progression. But now you kind of have skill trees going on. Really? Yeah, you can now... With each level up of your shield, select different abilities that you want to add to your uh, legend. So I actually did crazy. not know that. <laughs> I think the last time I booted up Apex was maybe during that Final Fantasy collaboration. Yeah, yeah. That was like last month, yeah. Yeah, well, a, lot, a month ago. And I guess in the span of a month, they've added a whole leveling system. Uh, wow, like, I'm really excited to see now uh, what the what that's going to have an effect on today's games. Um, but like I was just mentioning before, our, Ape, our Apex team is always a pleasure to watch. Going to have a good time watching it up here with all of you guys. So thank you very much for tuning in um coming up at four o'clock however we also have our varsity valorant team coming to be playing against i believe northwood yes so again <laughs> you know always a clash of the titans is always a spectacle to enjoy for everybody who gets to enjoy it um so we're going to get started off with the uh, Octane Collegiate League for our Apex Legends teams. And like you mentioned, there's a lot of changes going on in Apex besides that leveling system. Has there anything else that they've kind of changed about the game recently? Of course, there's always more tweaks across mm. the board. There's new skins, new cosmetics. Okay, but I believe there's been a rotation with the guns as well. But everything's mm. pretty much... Uh, it's very similar. There's been some new game modes added, but the main thing is going to be that new leveling system. And it's kind of reworked some, some Legends to have... The same abilities that they had before, but they get okay. them a little bit later on, and then they're a little bit more tuned up. So they're really? they're a little bit more unique, right? That's gonna that's gonna be <laughs> really interesting to see. Uh, maybe if we have downtime and tuner break, I'll study up and see exactly what's been changed about this game. That's really incredible. I love how they're always changing things up with this game. The game, obviously, from day one, is completely unrecognizable from it is now all the way back when I first booted it up, and it's been a journey all the way to get to this point where we're at now. And to be Speaking of journeys, again, the Octane Collegiate League, it's six games today. First place in each game gets 12 points, second gets 11, tw uh, third gets uh, 10, so on and so forth. So all these teams are going to be competing to get a high placement as possible, but you also get one point per kill. So it is going to be a battle for points. Everybody's going to be trying to scrounge up all those kills, yeah. scraps around <laughs> the map, and they are really going to add up and matter in the end because obviously you're here to win and you're here to do it in an impressive fashion. And our Apex team so far has has had success doing so, I believe. If not in this league, in another league, they're currently number one. So they want to make sure that that record stays intact and they can continue in establishing a dominant force over the Apex scene. Yeah, I love how these leagues are structured in terms of points because, you know, it kind of incentivizes playing safe initially because you want mm -hmm. that higher placing. But let's say you don't place as highly as you want in game one. Then in game two, you're going to start to play a little bit more aggressive. You're going to want to play for those kills. You want to get a little bit more up in the face of those opponents. Yeah. It makes it for explosive, more explosive games as you get further into the bracket. Right. You could play completely belligerently and just go around <laughs> chasing people down and, and getting as many kills as you can. You could be the first... Well, I guess you could be the first ones to die if you <laughs> end up getting all the kills. But you could just not even place in the top like five or, or 10, and you could still rack up a lot of points if you're that aggressive and that skilled in getting kills. But another thing I kind of wanted to touch on a little bit would be the uh, legends in the game itself. Like you mentioned, there's been some changes, so I'm not sure if they're going to be exactly how I remember them. But before, I do know that some of the more popular legends are things like Horizon for the ability to kind of control some fights as well as the mobility that the Horizon offers for your team. Um, I'm interested to see how our team's going to want to play things now with the 
these changes in mind, but I'm still expecting to see some of those staple picks like Horizon because some things, unless they have changed, never change. And having the ability to kind of fly wherever you want and also suck in the enemy team, forcing them to play around your giant black hole is always <laughs> powerful and always strong. And that's the power that Apex Legends brings to the table. And that's why it's always so excited to see it go down. But speaking of Legends... Who are some of your favorite legends of the game to see and to play? Ooh, I like I like Valkyrie. Valkyrie is really fun. It's a newer champ, but <laughs> or a newer legend, but they're just so fun. I love flying around. I love yeah. games like Destiny. I love Halo. I love those high mobility shooters. Titanfall as well. But uh, it's just Especially the Titanfall. gonna be a great time. Yeah, uh, for me, definitely. I mean, when Valkyrie came out, I think I booted up Apex for the first time in like maybe two months. Instantly bought her, played like 30 games in a row, and you know the rest is history. But for me myself, I am super super impartial to playing some Watson, um, which is why Tay has a special place in my heart. Tay, Watson legend. Um, also Loba. Love oh, yeah. Loba. The way for me personally, the reason I really liked playing Loba so much was because I really liked using specific guns, but I can never find it. So being able to put down the black market and get whatever <laughs> I want is just it feels it feels like I'm cheating. And I, I like cheating and getting away with it. So I I can just pick oh throw it down the black market, let me get my havoc, get my turbocharger. I'm done. A Clean. little goblin at your core, but <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. A little I bit. Lo I love Pathfinder. Only because mm. one time I got this this grapple trick shot with a Kraber. <laughs> You're such I've a loser. I've been chasing that high ever since. <laughs> <laughs> it's a battle that you're fighting in, in yourself, you yes, know, yes. trying to trying to meet that legendary moment for yourself. But as we're getting ready to start loading to the game, I want to thank my last, probably my one of my favorites. I've already said Watson. Uh, what's the what's the robot lady? Ash. Ash, yeah, the newer one, yeah. Because you know me. <laughs> All right. I love I love swords. I love katana-like swords awesome. as well. And then when you're, like, in a fight and you're like, I got to get out of here, and you <laughs> yeah. slice the portal, it's just so, so exciting. Again, just a taste of what Apex Legends has to offer if you're not familiar with it. The legends, the characters in the games have some of the most exciting abilities and play styles that you will probably ever see in an FPS battle royale. This isn't anything like PUBG where, you know, of course, an exciting <laughs> game in and of itself, but you're going to see some crazy stuff if you haven't seen Apex Legends before. Yeah, just any game with abilities, it's a lot more explosive, a lot more high energy, and a lot more exciting. So let's take a peek at this excitement as we load into our first map on World's Edge. Here we are. We're flying, and it looks like they're going to... Let's reposition there. A little bit close to the inner circle of the map, the middle. We're just going to play it safe mm -hmm. to start off, start things off. Yeah, looks like they're not going to be surrounded by too many other people here. They're going to get a nice, solid start off. Chubb, Tay, and Ramen Maid. Ramen Maid playing on the stage, acting as a little bit of our tour guide, informing us about how this league is going to be working and all the ins and outs. So shout out to Ramen Maid for making our lives a little bit easier here as we get things started on the first game. They're going to be scouting out a Hemlock and Peacekeeper. I'm not sure if that's what he's going to be wanting to rock so far for the rest of the game, but this is what he's got to work with right now. Uh, of course, if you're unfamiliar with the Battle Royale format and play style, ooh, <laughs> you got to just land somewhere scout for whatever weapons, guns, equipment you can find, and then work your way through there. I think that's probably one of my favorite kind of gameplay styles, just working with what you have. Always love that. And speaking of Valkyrie, I was just tuning on over to one of the Valkyrie players on one of the other teams for a moment there, but it seems that right now the Saints are just going to be making their way through the caverns and trying to find whatever they can. Yeah, and I think the main thing that the players are aiming for in the early game, just to have weapon-wise, is one far range, one close range. For you sure. want to have that balance, <laughs> at least. He's got uh, the three times scope, too. So if there are any mid-range engagements, I think the Saints are going to have a pretty good advantage, unless the enemy team is just rocking a bunch of, like, uh, DMRs or, like, you know, mid-range marksman rifles, I uh, should probably say. It's it's going to be really favorite for them, especially the charge rifle. It's kind of a multi-shot weapon. Like, of course, you click, and then there's, like, a little bit of damage, a little bit of damage, yep. and then boom, like, the main <laughs> one, right? So you can, if you're good at tracking people, then the charge rifle is especially for you. But speaking of, the Saints are going to get in a little little bit of an engagement to start off doing a nice little parkour wall jump there. Tay, you're giving up some flavor. But ultimately, they are going to choose to back out of that situation. I think there might have just been too many people there for their comfort. I think they're just not armed enough right now to take on a, a whole team fight. Just trying to still gear up at this spot. They didn't Ooh, land the at, havoc. A, at a total, uh, at a name.
game to drop, so they're just kind of getting chests mm -hmm. that are scattered about right now. They're decently armed up, but they don't really have any increases to their shields. They probably want to get to uh, to a fabricator. Yeah, I think they're going to. Well, first of all, yeah, they're going to be rushing to get into the zone here, uh, and they want to make sure that they're going to be in a good position for the next closure. Uh, they already, like I said, had a bit of an engagement to start things off, so they know that people are nearby. They want to make sure that they're in a good position to take an engagement if one pops up, because they can pop up at any moment. You know, like I mentioned, I don't know where that Valkyrie is, but just knowing that there is a Valkyrie especially makes it you have to be paranoid that someone can just come flying in at you and try to ruin your day, right? So, and getting information too, that's a big part of the game. But the Saints, they have the Bloodhound to kind of scout information, but that's more of like a localized thing. They're not going to really be able to seek people out from too far. It's just like that. He's scanned to see if anybody was in this immediate area, but they're not going to have much information outside of it. So they're going to have to play a little bit carefully um, when it comes to these longer range engagements because they're not going to know about them too early. Yeah, they're not in the most uh, greatest spot right now uh, in terms of information gathering, but once those team fights happen, they're going to be super exactly. mobile, super uh, able to lock things down, especially with the caustic. Mm -hmm. That alt just clears entire areas. And I think they're just trying to get to the city here because they can play those uh, short-range engagements with all the buildings. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Their, their, their equipment as well as their team composition is a lot more favorable to these kind of uh, close quarters engagements. Like you mentioned, Caustic, he's not going to do you too much in an open field, right? That's where your Bangalore comes in. But hold on, speaking of midfield engagements, Tay getting cracked and pushed back now. He's going to go for the full shield recharge. Ramen made a little bit further ahead. Not too too far though. Chubb's gonna opt for a scan. Not sure if he's gonna find anyone there, but Robin made getting cracked down already, but to die in this building. It's looking scary for the Saints. Again, you don't want to get too split up because that's how easy it can be to die when you're playing at this level. I know if my if this was in one of my games, I would not have even thought that it would be possible. I would have accused that guy of cheating if he was lighting <laughs> me up that efficiently. But that's just how things go in this collegiate oh, oh, octane. Oh, there they are. Collegiate League sees them. They're in the other building, parallel to them. Mm. Trying to get a shot. Mark them for his team gets caught on the windowsill, though. <laughs> but I think they get the gist of it. Now, peeking they in. play it low and slow. They don't want to overpeak. They're just trying to wait for the enemy to push them because they really want them to walk into their caustic trap, exactly. get a little bit too aggressive, and then pick them off from there. You see Tay up on the rooftop, just raining down bullets, maybe acting as a bit of bait, <laughs> and. Using the Bloodhound scan again, and they're gone now, so it seems like they've rotated over into another area. Oh, ooh, okay, getting a good amount of damage over there on the other uh, rooftop. One thing I was going to mention is I'm not sure if in this league you get to see the... Um, the legend selections of your enemy teams, but it could be a factor that they don't know who each team is bringing. They might not know that the Saints even have a caustic. So being able to kind of fortify an area and know that they actually do have the element of surprise for these traps is going to play a big factor in their initial game plan here. Um, and those caustic traps are going to be really coming into play here as now, as more people get closer and closer to the zone, they're going to start popping the traps themselves to make this a little bit harder for anybody to get in on them and the Saints are in a bit of a favorable position. I One thing I really like about the team composition is it's kind of give and take. They like these close range engagements but it also works out so that they have the Bangalore for when they're in those open fields. You have the Bangalore with the smoke screen and with the artillery to make things a little bit easier so you can get back into those close range engagements. It's a really smart composition if you ask me and I'm excited to see how they take this. And they're in a little bit of a sniper battle with the team there on that central tower with the Watson there, the Watson gauge up. They're unable to find any shots because it's just a little bit far. Oh! Oh, it's trying to get those long range shots. Doesn't quite find them, but they're close nonetheless. And it looks like they did change the charge rifle, my mistake there. Yeah, it doesn't work the same way it used to, where you click and then it's yeah. like a Spartan laser. Yes. <laughs> it's like, it seems you actually charge the rifle and then it shoots. So it's not more of a, it's not a laser weapon. Oh, but look at that scan. Three hostiles detected in the building over. So the thing with the scan is, the enemy team is able to see the scan. Of course, they're not going to see how many people are, it doesn't, work like a, it doesn't work like a reverse scan, but they at least know they got scanned and where they got scanned from. So the state's kind of revealing themselves a little bit there, but they're still going to get a lot of valuable information. They're going to keep holding down this building, fortifying it. They have nowhere else to go, really. They're surrounded on yeah. all sides, and the zone is kind of closing in on them, so they don't really have a reason to get out of here anytime soon. 
They're waiting for the moment that the ring gets a little bit past them, I think, and they want people from the ring to have to go through this building, try and take some cover, and they'll meet their demise here. Ooh, Those deck. snipes are just not landing. The new charge rifle, it's not as good as it was. It was definitely a yes. in my opinion. You will just get that laser find where it hits. Mm -hmm. really helps with your accuracy. It's probably why they changed it. <laughs> yeah, it was really strong before. It's a very good gun, um, but they want to have things that be at least a little bit interesting. Another scan going out, and you can even see all the caustic traps in that other building. So the Saints know, even if they get forced out of here, that other building's not going to be uh, friendly territory for them. No, sir. Uh, but Chubb, the rest of the Saints, still holding things down in building. Let's go Let's give this building a, a title here. Building, building Titan. Yep. The Teen Titans building. I don't know. Teen Titans building and Teen Titans Tower. Shooting the Justice League. Uh, a nice tower over there. <laughs> yeah, Teen Titans Tower shooting over at the Justice League den, whatever they called it, the Fortress of Solitude. Oh, that's the Superman thing. Right. Oh, wait, that's the Fortress <laughs> of Solitude. Because look how far away it is. It's, it's kind of locked off. So Teen Titans Tower, TTT shooting over at the Fortress of Solitude, and it's just a little bit of a. It's, it's still a tense moment, but things have calmed down a little bit but it's not going to be calm for long as the zone's closing. The Saints, luckily, They're, still in the zone. <laughs> that's the perfect spot for them. This Quite building literally. is right in the circle. They won't have to leave until the wee hours of this game. But the other teams, they will have to. It's gonna get pretty crazy. Oh, oh. we see another team start to head over. There <laughs> is the Crypto Alt. Oh! Building dodges it. Hits the rest of his teammates though. Yeah, so the, the traps are gone now, but the Saints are still here. Uh, they have the ultimates avail available as well, so they can still fight pretty strong. Yeah, they're still at relatively high power right now. They still have a lot of grenades too that they can use. True. They Things even get chaotic. Mm -hmm. And Robin Maid really wants these snipes here. And he's looking for these guys camping in this middle tower. He's like, it's far too open. They shouldn't be on here. They deserve to get sniped. For sure. And he's going to be willing to do it. Grass fall. It's good information for his team. But it's probably not going to rotate over towards them. Oh, a smoke grenade coming down there. Uh, and when I, speaking of smoke grenade, I wanted to bring up the point here. If, <laughs> I'm just thinking, if a team decides to push the Saints, what are you supposed to do? Like, the, it's full of caustic traps. There's also going to be smokes. Smoke. Yeah. Unless you have the, uh, oh, a full range crack. Enemy shield broken on the Bangalore. Even now, they have information there from that shot. They know that's Bangalore. And uh, Watson also going to get cracked by Ramen Maid. But he's going to get cracked himself. Going to Phoenix hit back to full here. Rather, never mind. He's just going to go back to sniping a drone detected. Can you see it? No, sir. Going to keep his eyes on the top of the tower, but still, there's going to be smoke coming from the Bangalore. It's going to be gas coming from the Caustic. And all the while, you have They'll a bloodhound. <laughs> you can see everybody, right? So it's going to be <laughs> like uh, Robin Maid and Chubb are uh, Robin Maid and uh, Tay aren't going to be able to see anything, but they don't need to because Chubb Caustic will. can see through his own gas. Oh, he can't. Well, the smoke's from the Bangalore. Exactly. At the very least, make but it a little messy. But if they stack yeah. them in a certain way, so they'll have some good synergy there. They really do have a good composition for holding down the fort. And maybe they're geniuses, maybe they got lucky, but this building's still in the zone. They're still going to have their fortress, or rather Team Titans Tower, my mistake, to kind of defend. And it's going to work in their favor very well, I believe. The drone's still kind of hovering out the tower, seeing what information they can find. They may be lucky, but these Battle Royale games, luck is part of the skill here. You know, you need the those weapons you feel comfortable with. You need to find the right positioning. Whether it be luck, you need to be able to manipulate your luck well enough to get yourself in a position like this. And uh, just looking at Caustic's ultimate here, I'm assuming what it does, because I've never played Caustic myself, it just shoots a giant gas it's a big cloud. cloud. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, so that's going to be another factor of making pushing into them a lot harder. Uh, again, I'm a Watson player at heart. Ooh, going to get cracked there. Ramen made. Feeling the heat. Maybe going to Phoenix kit now. But again, not a lot of action popping off just yet, but it's boiling. The pot's the boiling, storm. exactly, quite literally. The way, this is this is why this is so exciting, because even though things are calm right now, the fact that they're calm means that nobody's been getting killed yet. If you look at the squads left, 15, but they're all gonna get closer at some point. And again, with the Saints holding this tower down, oh my god, I don't know what that got launched over here, but it's gonna do quite a lot of work at cracking Ramamish 
shield and even a bit of his health. Gonna smoke Cloud out just to be a little bit safe. Coming out to see if he can find some more ammo. Going back into safety. But, like I said, all these squads are still here and they're still fighting. 45 players left. And they're all gonna be getting pushed closer and closer and closer. The Saints are lucky that they're still in a favorable position to kind of work around that fact, but it's this comm's not gonna last very long. I don't think so. Things are gonna get down to the wire. They might even have to rotate depending on the next circle. Maybe if they get lucky, they might be able to still bunker down in this position, but if Oh my gosh, they're just barely within the circle. Oh, that, okay, that's good for them, but honestly, it is still a little scary because, the, obviously, the enemy team knows the bounds of the zone, so if they really do want to get aggressive and start pushing up on the Saints, right, they know that there's only one safe exit they have. If they want to go the way that's behind them, they can't because that's where the zone's going to be. So they're going to be able to play with that in mind. Valkyrie ult. Oh, Valkyrie ult. I was like, what the hell is that? They know they're there because that lets you scan as you're flying. Exactly. So, so, choose to land so they're getting full info. Avoid it. It hit any air shots though. In fact, seeing where those guys are landing kind of tells you a little bit uh, of information for the Saints too, because if they're not choosing to land somewhere, that means it's probably a bad spot to be. So they know where it's good, and now they also know where it's bad, so they can kind of avoid it themselves. Team two eliminated. So now we're starting to see those eliminations coming to play. The Saints trying to get them themselves. Ramen made cracking too, just a little bit there. And uh, now things are going to start picking up. 30 seconds until the next zone. Things only a matter of time before the action picks up here. And while Ramen Maid isn't getting kills with these snipes every single time, those cracks build the shield, which now is even more important because yeah. that now builds your skills and levels and gets you a little bit further than the other teams. So, can you still pick up other people's shields then? Yes. And you just, it still be the instant level yes. up, basically. Interesting. What are some of the kinds of buffs that you can get? Oh, hold on. Speaking of, the Saints have been found for finding out now that there are some uh, unwelcome guests living underneath them, living in the floorboards. Whether or not they're going to choose to pop the tanks, they're going to go for it now, because uh, they want to make sure that they have a really hard time getting up here. And, uh, yeah, the Saints already got some people living in their basement. It's, it's getting scary now, even getting scanned up by some bloodhounds. Things are really picking up. Things are picking up. People want this location. It's a prime spot. This house is retail value. It's <laughs> shot up through the roof. It's still within the ring. And now there's a lot of bidders wanting to steal this house right from underneath them. We're going to have to get rid of these basement tenants. They're not paying rent. People are dropping like flies. 27 left. Last time I checked, there's 45. 26 now. We're almost at less than half of the previous population. Another sonar scan. The Saints are going to be... Oh, man. Look at that wall. Look at it. Where's it going to end? Where's it going to end? Right around that three. Oh! Right before. <sighs> That's scary. Again, the guests living comfortably. Maybe a little too comfortably. The Saints didn't get the opportunity to kind of fortify the bottom there, so they are going to be able to kind of set up shop. With seven squads left, 21 individual players being making up those squads. And they're all at least in this area. But like I was going to bring up, the way that this zone is kind of set up, you know that this building's not going to be in the next one. And that's just exactly how it's going to play out. The Saints are going to have to get on the move now. And they're going to have to give up this fortification zone. They're going to get one last scan to get some information. But they're going to have to get moving soon. Maybe even get a pickoff or two before they move out of here. But their welcome is not going to be staying here for long. They're going to have to move. Things aren't looking good. The ring is definitely going to be over near that train station building. Trying to catch the train towards leaving the station. And unfortunately, do you take the gamble? You leave early and alert the enemy team, or do you try and move as they move and take the fight? Honestly, with the Saints lineup, I think they would be better off moving with the other people. They still have the artillery with Bangalore. I'm not sure. Is, is it Gibraltar's artillery or uh, Bangalore's artillery that you get to throw the grenades as a few grenades? You throw both. For both of them? Yes. Okay. I but thought uh, I one of them. Gibraltar's is a circle and hers is more like a line. Okay. Okay. Good. So Hers concusses. So with that in mind, the Saints are going to at least be able to force things back. But the Beast of the Hunter is going to be popped. This is go time for the Saints. For every kill you get, you get to keep in this mode more. You get faster, you get wall hacks. It's exactly what you need to get a rotation going. And the Saints are already going to find themselves in the next zone. They're not going to find a lot of people yet, though. They're kind of scared for good reason. And they're going to fortify themselves behind the smoke canisters. Might not work out very well for the rest of the Saints, but it at least will for 10. 
Hay. And the base of the hunt is going to pop down now, but they are getting a lot of information thanks to those hunter predatory senses. Oh, but three behind them. The Saints now working with that information in mind. They have the ultimates ready. At least uh, Bangalores and Caustics throwing down the smoke. This is getting iffy here. They're kind of <laughs> sitting. Oh, wait. The smoke isn't affecting the teammates because it's, it's, it's in front. Yes. It's in front of them. It's not going to be behind. So they're going to run through, get into this next building. They're definitely not the only ones in there, but they are going to find the guests who are living in there first, and they're going to pop them down. That's going to be a kill for the Saints, or at least some downs going. Tay hey, taking a lot of heat. Will he be able to get inside before it's too late? No. He is going to go down, but the smokes and the gas is going to provide a nice, warm, squishy shield, but the nade in there going to put even more damage on him. Robin made popping up the shield. The more of them are coming, throwing out the Arc Star. Maybe not what you wanted to do in that situation. It's forced to go on the run with the, not a lot of HP left in the tank. Tay is going to go down. His banner is going to be able to get picked up, but there aren't even any respawn points left, really. So it's just Chubb and Robin made for this last zone. Yeah, it's a very dicey situation as Robin made goes down. Chubb is taking one last fight here. He needs to win it all, but he gets oh. taken down in eighth place. Yeah, fourth, not a bad result. While this fight is still ongoing, the excitement doesn't end here. This Bloodhound putting so much pressure on everybody in this area, getting a nice scan going off. The Saints never got to use their Bangalore ultimate, but there's no point because you're in a building. It's not going to really affect anybody. Nope. <laughs> so it didn't end up making much of a factor here, but this now we're looking to fight for the first place prize. We have the last two squads. Valkyrie is the last man standing for this one, going for the revive, but one of his teammates is still up. He sees where they are, so they know it's safe to go for it. Going to be able to bring that Bangalore back up to a living status, but the sonar is going to find and detect that they're on the outside of the building now. Going to go on top now. That's the maneuverability factor coming in. So handy to have in a situation like this, but on the high ground, shooting down, raining pain from the sky. He's going to get a lot of damage off, but it's not going to be enough to really threaten anything. Another scan knows exactly where they are. Up Above them, but below is where you want to be in the side of this building. You have a lot more space to work with, a lot more fortification to be able to get that. It's a 2v3, but I do like this Valkyrie's position, position a little bit better. You know, having the high ground is very, very useful, especially as the screen gets smaller and smaller. Wrong, it. Try and get off the tower. Here they are. There they are. They see the teammates. They don't have any grenades to shoot in there. They're just trying to pepper them down, breaking some shields. Oh, oh. Point accuracy through the smoke like as well. That's more. crazy. Got to hit him like two more shots here. Finding it, but the shield's up on this one. All of them are down. They're just looking for that last one. They get him. And that's going to be the first game going to school. Not sure who these <laughs> players are, but they're going to take this first place for this game. <laughs> so, yeah, this is going to be a very well played game. Good, good game. Riley, McKinnick, Mokai, and Cobra XX taking game one on this one. And it's such an exciting one. Like I mentioned, I didn't lie to you folks. You know, Apex Legends is one hell of a game to watch. And when it comes down to these critical moments of these holds, these pushes, these rotations, that's where the excitement kind of gets in. And that feeling that Apex gets you where you need to get from point A to point B and you got to figure out how the hell you're going to do that and fast. I think that's where the excitement really picks up and it's very exhilarating, a unique experience that most other games don't give you. Yeah, and the Saints, they got a decent placing in the rankings so far. Mm -hmm. Our mm -hmm. fourth place is nothing to sneeze at, especially with how volatile the volatile <laughs> these Apex matches can get. You know, you can just drop in the wrong spot, be seated right next to the winning team. And that's that's pretty much the game if you don't get the right weapons. <laughs> yeah, so, it, like, wow. I'm just thinking back to this game now. So they did place fourth. Um, the, the way that they kind of had to play that one, they didn't have a lot of exposure to combat. I think that might have factored into why they went down. If you saw those last squads, they all had red shields. You know, that's mm -hmm. max level, I guess you'd want to call yep. it now. Max level, completely shielded off because they had a lot of engagement before. But the Saints were living in the lap of luxury in the Teen Titans Tower, just sitting comfortably. <laughs> they didn't have a lot of opportunity to get experience and be ready for those really clutch engagements so they did have less basically less HP to work with when these engagements really did pick off. For example, when Tay got picked off there, if he had a red shield, he would have been able to get inside and start hunkering down. But unfortunately, um, that's just not how the game kind of played out for them. So they're going to go down fourth. They didn't get a lot of kills either, but they're still going to get a nice hefty uh, wire transfer of points into their wallet yep. to start things off tonight. And those shields are going to matter more and more, especially with this new update. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. get into what exactly you gain from leveling up. Uh, leveling up the shields, but uh, it's pretty much 
unlocking the full breadth of your character, your full okay. skill set, plus a little bit more now. Okay. Like it's, every champion is, or every legend has pretty much gained a new ability. Like, really? With a Wraith, first okay. level, you have two options. Each level, you have two options. So first mm -hmm. level, you can either take a reduced cooldown on your tactical skill, like the, the little warp. Mm-hmm. Or you can get the voices passive where you can tell when people are aiming at you. Oh, is that a thing she had before? Yes, that was a passive that she just had before. That's why she was so uh, high tier is because she uh -huh. just had like an extra ability that let people know when they were near you. You had like eyes on the back of your head. Huh. Much. That's cool. <laughs> but I love now she game. has to choose between really focusing in on that warp, that mm -hmm. little getaway tactic, or if you want the little extra buff of being able to know when people are aiming at you. Mm. So, so you're fighting with a little bit of an incomplete kit. Yes. You got to pick at least some path to go down and kind of commit to one play style, right? Yeah, and then as you get further in, there's another choice. And then I pr I'm pretty sure Red Shields is like you get just the final ability. It stops being a choice, but the first two you get a choice. So it lets you build your characters a little bit mm -hmm. differently as you get every game you play. Uh, or depending on the situation or map, it's... It's great. It adds a lot more complexity to the game. I really like that. And, well, I know with Apex Legends, there's, a, what, around like 60 people per lobby. Yep. So <laughs> it can kind of take some time to get everybody into a lobby. But you saw how exciting game one was. I'm very excited to see what game two has in store for us. But if you don't want to miss it, then just stay tuned and stick tight with us because we'll be right back as soon as game two starts.
Hi, welcome back. We're going to get ready for game two, and we're going to be bringing you the action here. Again, the Octane Collegiate Apex Legends. And that first game, we saw what the action tonight has. And so I keep saying tonight because we're usually streaming in the evening. This time, morning. It's, it's morning. This afternoon. Yeah. Hi, guys. Well, it's afternoon. We're on noon. It's noon. The it's sun's noon. still out, you know. <laughs> so, well, I can't see it right now in this uh, nice broadcast room but the either way the sun that i really matter that really matters to me right now is the nice radiant heat of the game that we're gonna have game two getting ready we're still on world's edge for these apex legends games and the saints are gonna be landing already keeping the same composition as the last game i mentioned the flexibility that it offers you still have some wiggle room out in the open but when you get inside and you can really fortify and hunker down you, you have so much synergy with your composition so they really want to just start off, find all the weapons and utilities and equipment that they can, and then find the zone and a building in the zone and sit and wait. Um, hopefully they can find some kills along the way since they didn't, it kind of came to bite them um, back in the last one, but hopefully they can rectify that in this next game. Yeah, they're looking to, they love the spot. It's just pretty safe, uh, good mix of, of loot for how out of the way it is and mm -hmm. let's them pick a good two spots to go to depending on where the circle is. They have a city to the right, a city to the left. Mm -hmm. It looks like this tunnel is going to be the way to go to meet up with the rest of his team. Good there. Made here in the tunnel, scouting it out, getting all the loot here. Overall, I wonder what they're going to do any differently from the last game. They might play a little bit more aggressive to get those extra kill points, but mm -hmm. they're just going to try and play for another high rank kick. What do you think? Potentially. I think right now, like I said, they want to spend a little bit more time maybe uh, on the run, so to speak, because, it, again, they really actually... Got a gold backpack, backpack there. Oh, I didn't even notice. Lucky. Impressive. <laughs> uh, believe, I remember, at least the last time I was aware, the gold backpacks allows you to revive yourself. Uh, is that still the case? Or I think, actually, I think, no, they changed it so to revive I think it was the one that uh, lets you heal doubles your or no that's the shield what does the gold backpack do it r helps you res faster i think so I think, yeah. res your teammates self-res was the shield <laughs> oh that, yeah that shield. Heals was the gold armor and then the increased ability charge was helmet i think so yes. in any case we're gonna find out what it does or maybe not hopefully we won't find out what it hopefully does not. because nobody will go down in this next game but maybe if we could look at the map of the um, hopefully we can see the map. I wanted to look at maybe potentially where the Saints want to start moving over to. But if not, then we'll just keep watching where they want to run around to see where they can find any opportunities. You want to make sure that you always have your eyes open to opportunity and uh, you're, you're keeping you're keeping your options open. You might have a game plan in mind, but again, my favorite kinds of games, like I said, ones where you kind of just have to roll with the punches and take what's coming at you and turn it out to be in your favor as best as possible. That's exactly what you have to do in a game like this. You can't stick to your game plan all the time. You have to be flexible. You have to adapt. You have to make the most out of your situation. So the Saints, they kind of went one way. It looks like they're going to go a different way now. In fact, they might even use the evac tower um, to just try to get there as soon as they can, but it seems they're holding down want to go east it's the great american expansion over <laughs> actually no they went west never mind <laughs> marco polo went east china well, there so taking the silk road <laughs> we're going to china guys <laughs> off to china and here ho we're going uh they're gonna keep riding out here but with this a little bit of a lull in the action here what do you think the saints are gonna be like you mentioned some of the changes to the shields and any up level up opportunities do you know oh what's what is is that just like an ESP thing? You can I have up? no idea what that was, but uh, <laughs> uh, listen, wow. I've played a few games with a new update, but not uh -huh. enough to know every Right. Bit do you know it. any of the ones on the legends that they have here or no? I do believe I think Ramen made on the Bangalore. Mm -hmm. I think there's one that increases speed boost. Speed boost. I think it's mainly split split between a passive and an increased your tactical oh, okay, ability. As far awesome. as I know, I mean, we played a few games on Wraith. Yeah, I know at least as soon as I get home, I'm playing some Apex, or maybe in between the downtime between Apex <laughs> and uh, Valorant. Tonight, I'm probably gonna run some Apex in the Nexus. Let's which... see if we have a lot of downtime, though. We have a lot of games to get through yeah, today. Well, it's gonna game be a good time. Yeah, like I mentioned, it's it's truly a pleasure to be able to cast some Apex today.
It's uh, not every day I get to cast one of my favorite games. This is definitely my favorite battle royale at the very least. And the Saints still seeing if they can find some information. They're in Geyser Town. I'm not sure what it's actually called, but that's what I'm calling it right now. And uh, just throwing out some gas tanks. You might as well, because it's going to refill anyways. And who knows, maybe you find a deer waltzing by and then you get a nice meal out of uh, that free kill there. But Saints still just scavenging for some loot. Yeah, it looks like they're being a lot more mobile this game. Mm -hmm. Just kind of taking what comes, mainly trying to get as looted up as they can before taking these gunfights. And they're relatively geared up, but they're trying to aim for that purple item there on the map. Not quite sure what that is, but we'll see soon enough. Yeah, I can't imagine them staying here. Um, obviously, you never stay anywhere permanently, but as far as permanent goes in a game like this, I can't really see themselves staying here permanently. I think this is a little bit of a temporary location. They might want to try to find uh, one of those sonar scanner things, those beacons to know where that next zone might be, or see if they can... This might be like their kill box. They might be waiting here to see if they can get anybody trying to rotate, get any pickoffs, before they kind of settle in on their final location. In any case, this is where the Saints are going to be playing right now, and... Uh, uh, they're gonna have to try to make the most of it. Yeah, that's your strat. You're like, why would they stay here? You know, who in their right mind would camp out this area? Maybe that's their game plan. Exactly. No one would ever expect the Caustic to have the six traps <laughs> in this long random house here of you an know. unnamed geyser town. You know, <laughs> Stretch swamp, it looks like. They're just setting up for a big trap here. There is a death box. I like this cam. Let's stick on this cam a little bit more. Let's see if there's anybody kind of shifting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. I believe Amanda is observing right now. But let's see if there's anybody coming around this road. Uh, so the Saints are holding down in this house. But if you looked over to the left, I know that there's a bit of a city that people love to rotate through. Nobody coming down just yet. It's a moment like this, I wish I was is playing. That a guy Vantage. on the right in the lake there? Is that a box of some sort? Uh... I see a little yellow, black and yellow. That looks like one of those there. little crates that we were like, what the oh, hell is you're right, that? It is that crate. Yeah. Um, so is Saints that... are kind of holding down right now. While they're just still just looting up and putting some boxes down, we see them kind of occupying that little hovel. Look at the, look at the geyser, isn't Beautiful. it pretty? You don't get to see it from this angle very much. But the zone is closing in on them. And in fact, the border is not too far. So this border town might become the next big city as we get some migrants moving in. Uh, they're going to find that beacon that they were looking for there. And uh, maybe some people are going to start paying them a visit. I think you're correct in people in that town. I hear gunfire coming from that I'm relative right. area. So maybe they're just going to play for whenever that team rotates them over. Ooh, his G7 scout is really modded up there. It's got all purple except for a mag. It's the only thing he's missing. So if he hits the shots, they should be laser accurate. Oh, Saints getting scanned out from the neighborhood house. Of course, it's those damn neighbors ruining everything, as always. Ah, oh, man. I mean, like I mentioned, my, my game sense is pretty pretty good. I told you this is what was going to happen, and it's happening. The Saints actually are going to probably be settling here permanently, at least semi-permanently, as the zone's probably going to end up closing off here at some point. But I think they do want to stay here. I miscalculated the value of this house. I thought it was just one kind of small segmented house, but it's this house is basically half of this whole area And then there's another house on the other side of it, but um, you know There's a reason that that Harshal and Tay were kind of harassing me to join the team maybe a little bit Maybe I'm not sure I'm not sure but as we're switching over to another one of the teams We're gonna see it from their perspective. He's pushed. Oh, but yeah, oh, the winning team of the last game. Yeah winning team the previous Apex Legends uh, is the namesake of the game and they're kind of living up to that title already getting Getting some pickoffs already, finding a golden loot box as well. They're going to be in a really pretty position to kind of mess up our Saints, unfortunately. And speaking of, look at these engagements. Can you find that shot? I don't think so, sir. I don't think so. Hiding behind the roof. The Saints got to be quaking in their boots right now. They obviously don't know any of this stuff is going on, but they might be feeling it as we get the first scan. And here it comes. The Shrek Swamp is getting invaded by the fairy tale creatures, and the Saints are going to have to do their best to handle the invasion as they're already occupying the next house and the house previous behind the states are going to have to work together to make sure that they can at least fortify this one. It's going to be key here, thanks to Pite. 
get a little crazy, especially with the, how small this house oh, he is. He sees one in that house over there, jumping up and around. <laughs> this, is, this is the beauty of Apex. Like, like that information is valuable. It's even might even even gotten to, to crack him a little bit there, but not going to work out. But just doing things like that, these these micro interactions can matter so so much. Looking at through the door, I think there might be a privy to that information now. They might know to do the save. They might be watching each other through the door, creeping through the uh, looking glass, seeing if you can get some lights off, but no sir, not gonna find any mark there. Leaving that havoc there in case he needs to switch, also genius, but now another squad. I think this is the squads that the Saints are shooting at. Yeah, looking back at them, the, uh, the Bloodhound adjacent as well. Got a similar comp on that side. The only thing different is the Bangalore is the Valkyrie. Uh, so they're gonna be a little bit more mobile. And the best part I feel like in this hold for the Saints is they actually can utilize the Bangalore ultimate to make sure that nobody can leave this area um, if they're trying to force them through the house. But Chubb taking a huge chunk of damage. He's looking scared for them already. Chubb not in the best spot. A little <laughs> get, got caught off guard in front of that window there. He has enough healing to make himself back into tip top shape here. On fire. It's really pushing outside of this house. It's a very secure spot, especially this little corner he's sitting in now. It's a few of those corners that let them just go over there. You know, they say if heal and get back up to top shape. They say if there's an earthquake, you know, you get underneath the table and hunker down, that might be what he's doing. Uh, but that door can get popped off in case you didn't know. Yes, you can break the doors permanently get rid of that modification unless you have a uh, I forgot the name of that legend the one that can stick up the goop oh the catalyst catalyst yeah uh, but you know, the gas is kind of getting exchanged they got gas over there they got gas over here sonar is gonna pop off I know they find Tay. I'm not sure if they found ramen and chub with that skin not gonna have at least exact taps on them but the Saints this engagement is going to matter a lot. I know they feel a little bit inclined to just wait this one out, but I feel like they have to get this push off because they are outside of the zone and it's only a matter of time before people start coming at them and people are coming at them from their way. The other squad is in a more favorable house because nobody's going to be coming at them from here. Ramen's already going to be taking a huge shot of damage. They're going to be healing himself back up, but that door's going to go down. Nothing but a smoke of gas is going to be able to dissuade people from entering this house. So Bob, the gas is coming in clutch. That's gonna be the only Another defense they have. But wow, they're really rushing in here. Nice. We'll use salt here and we'll slow them down as much as he can. He's gonna act the canister. Doesn't see anybody. Ooh, another thing, but he gets shot anyways. Love shield taking around here. The team, I believe they do have the shield advantage going into this. And they're completely surrounded here. It's not looking good for the Saints. They do still have the Caustic Ultimate as well as the Bangalore one. So if things do get hairy, if they can at least get to an opening that isn't being watched, they can start using their ultimates and try to escape. But the way things are right now, it's going to be very hard for them to get anywhere uh, comfortable. It's just going to be very difficult all the way around. But I think Tay sees one of them coming around this corner potentially. They're gonna hold it down. The Saints are still holding this down. Like I said, it's a bit of a scary hold, but they know how to do it and they're doing it completely. But they have so many ops, literally a guy spot. under their house. You know, like this is how bad it's getting over here. The Saints really have a lot of people praying on their downfall. Two people, a whole squad living <laughs> under their floorboards. You cannot be serious right now, but they're gonna find them. The sonar scan is gonna come out. Not gonna We'll find any shots, but the zone is gonna start moving. I think it is. It is, is it? Yeah. It is moving. The zone is moving. The Zates have to get on a move as well. And it's only a matter of time. No, it's not. Okay, it's stopped here. The zone's gonna move in 114, and the floorboard squad are gonna be taking a little bit of damage. The condo is gonna help the shields just a little bit, but ultimately gonna shoot to recharge. Yeah, this is a very tough spot for the Saints and the other team, I must add. I wonder, a Caustic ult could really flush another, but it looks like they're just going to go in. Yeah, Bloodhound ult is going to be committed. Saints. Bloodhound ult coming in. This is all the gas canisters are still going to be there to dissuade them. And Nate's coming out as well. The Saints are all throwing it down the hallway. Get out of my house! <laughs> They're telling you to leave. They have the ultimate still. Uh, Tay and Ramamade on that front line. Chubb throwing out that R Star could do so much damage if they can find it, but they get the down on the Bloodhound. He, even his ultimate wouldn't be enough to keep him uh, uh, alive against the Saints onslaught of fire. Mozambique charging through. Just trying to find anybody through these smokes. So valuable. You think
think that CS, with all the value that these smokes can bring, and they're going to chunk up that costing a bit. Chubb moving forward with the ultimate of himself. They get at least one down, I believe. They got the team there. They actually wipe that team. The floorboard squad is out of the game for now, and the Saints at least have one route to get out. With five seconds on the clock, they got to start charging up, they got to start healing, and they got to get a move on because it's not friendly territory out there. They got to get out of here as fast as possible. War zone out there, and they're going to have to cross no man's land to get to the next point. They don't know what's waiting for them in the next house if they try it. Alto is committed. This is, this is exactly what they need. They have to wait for those things to go off, and they got to book it down. They're going to get the scan. They know there's people out there waiting for them, there's and they're the all going to be Ultimate as well. He's going to go for it. And it's scary. The finish line is getting to you. You got to get going, and here they go. Running out, but they're going to get Arc Star. In fact, Ron Mays and Mealy going to go down. Chubb as well. Next to follow, Tay is ultimately going to go down, sitting in the zone and facing down a firing squad. It was all the odds stacked against them, and they stared it in the face and tried to defy them, but ultimately it's going to catch up. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say I told you so, but I kind of did. I feel like that zone is just so hard to hold because it's so many windows, so many openings. People can come around. You had people, honestly, Underneath you. Yeah. literally, the floorboards <laughs> are literally safer to hold than that building because nobody's going to be able to shoot you from the window across exactly. the street and all that other stuff. So it, it's such a hard thing to hold. I'm honestly impressed that they held it for so long, but whether or not that's the reason that they ended up falling there, uh, it, it, I think they just need a little bit more mobility if they're going to be playing uh, in a zone like that but if they sacrifice one member of this composition then the synergy kind of dies out so I, I can understand why uh, they wouldn't want to do that so ultimately they're gonna go down here finishing in the sixth or seventh I think and we're gonna be watching the surviving squad this is a previous winning squad from that last game still going they're the kill leaders as well a utter dominant force looking at them they got five and one assist on just this Bangalore so a deadly squad to deal with at least and hopefully we're gonna see what they got and Kraber picked up from one of those crates as well a deadly <laughs> sniper if you know how to use it properly oh yeah the Kraber it's, it's a classic it's very very strong if you know how to hit the shots probably getting a nice few damage on the enemy up top I believe it, that's a Watson up top yeah that is a Watson up top mm -hmm. That's the Watson that was holding that bridge. That's a lot of people. So I was gonna say that well. scan showed more than three people. So they're kind of fighting for control over that house, and these guys are happy to be out in this open field. It's not oh, honestly, especially in this game, houses are not always safe. Houses can literally be harder to hold and more dangerous because there's so many access points and openings, and ways people can shoot at you from. There's only so many way, ways you can get out of the house as well. You know, this isn't battlefield. You can't just shoot a chunk in the wall with an RPG and run out. You know, you got to get out through a civilized means of egress. Um, so I feel like, and again, without mobility, if you don't have a wraith on your team, someone who can literally just make a portal for you in that house and get you out, it's a lot harder, a lot scarier to manage. Hey, and playing outside really plays to the Valkyrie's strengths, because if things go south, they can try and use that ult to reposition a little bit, but as this ring gets smaller and smaller, it's... Oh, lord, yeah. Useful. I just <laughs> looked at how tiny it is. We're getting down to five squads, only about... <laughs> Maybe I want to say 200 meters across uh, an apex distance. Might be pushing it. <laughs> Even then, things are getting very tight here. This Kraber is going to be hard to use. Four shots left. I've got to make it count. That's one squad and one yeah, more. Squad. Five right squads here. left. Oh! oh there's a little straggler you in the box. You don't want to be in there. That scan coming up from Bloodhound. Not sure if that one was on their team, so I don't know if they know that this Bangalore is here. But using all that utility, he sees one running out, getting ready to find that Kraber shot. Can you get it? Yes, he can! 144 to the body, and the, all that fire as well. Going to make it all the more likely you're going to go down. Just sending the fire down into that tanker. Riley is super low. Going to use that Phoenix get to get back to full. And another scan. Fun Finding six, Mokai, the eyes for this squad, gonna be trying to keep them aware of all the circumstances with the ultimate ready as well. You can pop those wall hawks whenever you want to, but you're gonna need to use that Phoenix kit first if you want to stay in this game. This Bangalore is really emphasizing the Bangalore energy of being a complete brute force enforcer for their squad, dishing out death, damage, and mayhem, wiping out another squad. It's just two left. Can you find that legendary shot? Can you make that dream? come true no but opting for the ultimate to make it so that if they want to get over here they're gonna have to fight through the nail for it 
and the screen shake, <laughs> the frames are dropping, the server can't handle the mayhem. And oh no, the explosion, it's impossible to see. I hope the players aren't witnessing this lag as well, but 4D gonna take some damage from maybe an explosive sent out, but the Kramer with the slide! They're breaking the shield, taking him down. Surprise, he's still alive, coming around the corner and lighting him up. It's complete and utter chaos. That's gonna be another victory for this squad, showing that they are a force to be reckoned with here. Yeah, they they are the apex predators of this tournament Woo! going forward. Two wins and while also being the kill leader is an impressive feat, but they deserve it. I mean, look at that. They just played it amazingly, very clean, very aggressive as well. Their aim was just on point the entire time. Wow, they must have really just read the dirt there. You know, the, you saw Bloodhounds kind of scooping it up and, and sifting through. They they know that map in and out. And again, I feel like the way you choose to hold is such an important place. Sorry, Desk. I, I don't mean, I'm just excited <laughs> right now. My, my apologies there. But it's just, I... I love this game. I think you can tell I love this game, okay? It's the way that all these teams are playing and the strategies that they're implementing and how they're executing everything. It's just so immaculate, so well done, and I cannot wait to see how this next one goes. But just kind of wrapping up this first or second game here, kind of retell me because uh, I'm a little bit lost here. I remember the yeah. Saints kind of went to Shrek Swamp. They had some people living under their floorboards. A push went wrong. They kind of, I felt the courage, yes. you know, I like the, the theme was ramping up and if they pushed it, it would have been insane. They would have made it through, but the odds were against them and it, they did succumb to the fire squad waiting outside yeah. from them. Uh, so that's how that went. For yeah, they had to make the journey uphill, but there's a team waiting for them, a caustic alt as well. They had to mm -hmm. run through and a hail of gunfire. They just couldn't get through it and I believe they placed around 7th or 7th yeah 6th like or 7th around that area so not the worst showing but you know they did wipe out a squad as yeah. well they got the floorboard team so that's some points on the board and going forward, I think they're going to have to play a little bit more aggressively, but that was a solid round them nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, they did get a squad wipe. That wipe was, you know, aggressing on their territory, so they really had no choice they had to defend themselves. Um, but other than that, they still haven't been able to find those pushes, those um, kills that I know they're capable of. This team is really deadly when they're put in the right circumstance, but it feels like right now they're playing a lot more reserved. For whatever reason that is, uh, whether or not they're finding their footing and they're trying a different play style, not entirely certain, but I do feel like if they did change up their composition a little bit, because this composition is really forcing them inside. They can't be this flexible outside. They have to commit for a location and hold it down for dear life. But uh, like the winning squad, it's kind of a similar comp, but they have a Valkyrie. So at least they can get out of somewhere successfully. I feel like that's where the Saints are kind of really struggling, and hopefully we're going to see some changes coming up with their composition if they feel like that might be the issue as well. But as we're getting ready again, a lot of people we're waiting for um, in between each game to set up the lobbies. We'll see you very soon as we're getting ready for game three.
everybody and welcome back we're here with the final game on world's edge we've seen the first two the strats have been figured out we've seen people in the floorboard we floorboards <laughs> we've seen people in titan's tower now we're going to see where they drop next what are you excited to see, Daniil? Well, if they have the same composition, I'm not expecting too much to change. They're probably going to stick with what they've been going so with so far. You spend a lot of time strategizing certain compositions, certain strategies. Changing it up on the fly is scary and risky and might not work out for them. But if they do have a different comp, we might see something else. We're going to be seeing the same comp. And we're going to be seeing them line in the same spot as well. So hopefully, if they're going to be at least sticking with the same strategy, hopefully they might be able to execute it a little bit differently because I haven't been working out with them uh, too well for these last two games. So the last time they're on this map, Tay already shooting something. Not sure if he was just shooting the door or what, but he, he did let off some fire. So not sure if they are going to be already starting with an engagement. And using that ultimate boost, they're already at 53% to start the game off. If you can find an early engagement, if you have your Bloodhound ultimate, that'll go a long way in making sure you win that one. Bloodhound ult is just an amazing ult to have. Increases your movement speed, increases the way, the way it lets you see the enemies much easier. Black and white with the red highlights. You love to see it. Job opting the Sentinel to start at least. It's, a, it's an interesting sniper rifle. It's the one you can charge with the shield batteries. It's a little bit harder to hit, but it's more akin to the Kraber. Than ah, the Sentinel. The sniper. But a sniper is a sniper. Whether you're charging or not, they need something for these long duration engagements. Uh, they. I, honestly, wait. Besides the charge rifle, I don't think they really have had an actual solid sniper to uh, kind of start that. Like they they've had these engagements with these medium range rifles, but nothing like actual full long range ones. But as uh, so we're gonna deal with a little bit of a technical issue right now, we're gonna be back to our pretty faces. We're gonna hear the action still. And again, I want to speculate a little bit on how they want to make these ones, these next game go for them because they have had a bit of issues kind of really mustering together this defense. Like the defense is the whole name of their composition, but when it comes down to the defense, they got it. But the disengagement from the defense yes. <laughs> is the issue because unless they really get lucky and they sit in a spot where the tower is literally going to be the entire zone. Oh, they found a vault key. Did they? Did they? Yes, perfect. They They're going to get all the loot oh. in the world to work with now. That so. is actually an amazing start for them. That's the whole strat of landing here is that's what they've been playing for the entire time. I guess so, yeah. I mean, it's not unlikely, but I guess when it really works out, it's just perfect, right? Out. You land and you find a vault key, you're right next to the vault. Perfect. And you know that no, one's, no one else is there, so it's a little bit of a, a confidence thing as well. And Tay go for the full heavy ammo build here with the 30-30 and the Prowler. Have to gather up a lot of that if he wants to make that build work out, but they're two very powerful guns. I love the Prowler. I think it's one of my favorite guns in the entire game. That's the... That's like the little SMG? Yeah, it's the burst um, SMG, the heavy bullets. I love it. I used to have the mod that would make it full auto, and that was my favorite gun, but I still like the burst. Uh, I'm a little bit more partial to the... Oh, hold on. Oh, 20 squads left. I thought that was 20 players left. I thought that was really scary for a second there. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the Havoc with the turbocharger. Even without the turbocharger, something about that, like, little... Oh, there's a oh. team already. A snipe coming out. Yeah, Chubb losing a huge chunk of his... Vitality, gonna have to retreat beyond the hill. Saints are really split up here. Chubb, oh, but the Saints are coming up on the side behind the squad that kind of took out a chunk of Chubb's back. Hopefully gonna be able to get some of that flesh in, uh, in with interest, you know, pay them back with blood. And the Saints are actually going to get aggressive here, and I like this option. They do have the Bangalore ult, they want to go for it regardless, right? They're going to be down one squad member on this enemy squad. Not sure if it's the one that the Saints are pushing into, or if it's a different one altogether, but the Saints are still going to get aggressive on the ones that are fighting before. But in the over this game with the other squad here, uh, already down one, the Saints are getting closer to this engagement. They're going to be circling in on all those uh, that action that we were just witnessing with the Bloodhound ultimate. Like I mentioned, they're going to have that earlier than most other squads are going to have theirs ready. So they're going to go for something. They gotta go for it kind of now. They're gonna be taking all the all the shield damage. And as the Saints are getting closer to that mayhem, they have to make sure that if they're gonna start this engagement, they're gonna start it on a strong foot. You don't want to be going into all that chaos with only two pips of your shield or one pip of your shield. So Chubb's gonna take a second to recharge, refill, and whether or not they're gonna commit with this blood health ultimate, we're gonna have to see in just a second. I think they're surrounded uh, uh, nearly a whole points right now. They're just trying to get into a little bit of a safer scenario right here. So you see. <laughs> this Eli Howell team here, <laughs> Eli not Howell too team. far from the Saints. Now, looks like we 
because your daddy's looking to try daddy up and get his kids back in the game here. But he's going to get gunned down here. He's behind the corner. He's in the condo with the heal of shields. And there he is. Oh, for the peacekeeper. Doesn't quite find the pink. That's going to be a player going down. Eli Howell going to find a kill, but the Saints are not too far behind. If they get a scan off here and they see that, there's just, I believe that was just two members, this could be very advantageous for them. If they're going to get the scan, they should go for it now because you're already in front of the tower. Anyways, they're not going to opt for it, though. Just going to use uh, their vision the old-fashioned way. They don't want to draw too much attention to the fact that they're on this tower because they'll kind of be sitting ducks for anybody who's kind of tracking them down. They're going to get closer to this next evac tower. Whether or not they're going to want to hop on it like a bus transfer or they just want to stick in this area. I think they're just going to off the line of this house and try looting up. They have a couple of nades, and it looks like they're good in the ammo department, but I think they still need some, like, you know, things like sights and uh, quality of life things to make these longer range engagements and such good for them. The 30-30, he's got the 2x4, uh, so he's going to have that on lock, but you can never have too much equipment. So much equipment you got very little I you're up more and more here. The main thing that they do to level up here is their shields are still on those blue shields. That's where they've been nearly this entire series so far. Briefly, but it was close to the end. So Might have just been one of them, too. I think they're going to get a little bit more aggressive here. I see a team and they're just running full sprint towards them. Maybe taking a high ground engagement, but also just going to avoid them all the same. This house, no one's inside, so that's gonna be clear for the Saints to go in and start taking all the loot. <laughs> yeah, look at oh man, this is my dream. All, I love seeing those little green energy packs, you know. Yeah, it means I know I'm gonna have a good time here. But like I said, I think the way they're kind of changing up their aggression is, is is working out in their favor. They didn't commit. You know what? Actually, I'm going to take it back. I feel like if they committed for the, that engagement in the caves, there's, what, two squads already fighting there? Maybe even three. A lot of them already had people down. The Saints were kind of relatively full, and I don't think they knew that they were even out there. So they had the Bloodhound ultimate, and he popped that. They would have seen all the squads there. I'm not sure if you get to see their health as well with the Bloodhound ultimate, but they would have at least known that all the people on there, they would have seen people on the floor. They would have recognized it as a great opportunity. Plus, they had the Bangalore ultimate to catch any stragglers or anyone trying to leave. So I, I think that was a little bit of a missed opportunity. Um, I think they might just be playing for the placement this game then, if, if their actions on that round might be telling me anything at the least. Um, but if they're going to be going for that, then they might want to get a move on because this is not a spot you're going to want to be in. This is always getting closer and closer to your back. And we hear a lot of gunfire going on in the surrounding area. So. I think this, the play of the game right now is to just chill out. Oh, we see an enemy there. We have a visual on the Bloodhound over in the southeast. Shooting up in the air with a shot. The back tower, uh, potentially, because there was one nearby. No, it's a different back tower farther away that those guys use to find a, to get a nice little relocation. Basically, evac towers replace Valkyrie. If you don't have one on your squad, you can just use one of those. But even so, just having the ability to use one on command, um, even if you don't have that, there's a lot of Valkyrie replacements that I'm thinking of. But what you can't replace is her ability to fly around and shoot missiles down on people. So you might not need her ultimate necessarily, but with the evac tower equipment piece as well as the ones that naturally spawn on the map, you're gonna have a lot of mobility in this area, and that might favor the Saints. I think there's one evac tower basically right outside of this little hut. So if they have been having issues disengaging, this could be a solution for it, and that's gonna be playing around an area where evac towers are accessible. So things are gonna be looking a little bit different for them in this one, but I worry they're gonna fall on the same track. They're gonna hold this house once again. This yeah. is exactly where they're setting up right now. I'm trying to take these long range sniping battles to try and build up a shield for the final engagement. Another scan from Blood that doesn't find much, but they know where they are. Bolts are coming from that western city over there. The cost of gas goes up. It doesn't really affect the demon though. He's gonna go down. Just rotate over to playing very, very safe. Yeah, very safe indeed. But uh safety, it's there's nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know, you're gonna be waiting out the timer, waiting out the... There's an adventure here. Oh. Oh, they're gonna get the case. That's gonna be some loot. Maybe this is gonna give them the compass of the video. Two by four, the Evo Cache, and the Bojack! Okay, we were talking about weapons. That was a point I was gonna bring up. This is definitely my favorite. Uh, I'm really sad that they moved it to be a mythical weapon, which I agree with because I was... Uh, 
I I am a beast with the bow check, and I feel like most people are as well. So moving that back. <laughs> Does this have the scatter arrow on? It? Yeah, it has all of the okay. modifications on it by default. Uh, with the difficulty to pick up that crate, because again, you can't pick this up anywhere else now. It's yep. just a spawn for that like a Kramer. I know the pain. Uh, the prowler was in the box for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how, I mean, when you said rotations, like do they regularly rotate out what's yes, in the box? Yeah, yeah. Every few seasons, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I do remember the prowler. Yeah, was uh, one of those things that I would, I would find a crate, I'd see that, and I'd ignore it because I hated using it. <laughs> um, Fair enough. <laughs> but I guess more for you, huh? But with that bow check in hand, Saints are going to be a little bit deadlier with these close and long and mid range engravings. This gun is just. This, oh, that's literally not a gun. But this bow. This, this weapon is this so. Projectile based weapon. <laughs> this projectile based ballistic. It's not ballistic either. You know what? <laughs> it's, it's projectile based weaponry, primitive, uh, ancient human history contact. Uh, Weapon. I almost called it a gun again. But in any case, it's going to be so effective at allowing them to play a little bit more versatile. Um, he's got to have the alternator as well in his back pocket. So if he needs to get a little bit desperate and start spraying people down, he's going to have the ability. But that bow check could be huge for the play style. And while well, we have a little bit of a standstill here, if you'd like, oh, never mind. I'm seeing an engagement here. Not hitting any arrows. Now, artillery would we'll love to see what they're doing on over there, but the Saints are going to be watching from the sidelines and seeing if they can find anybody trying to escape from that chaos. Tay watching the other side of this barn here. Oh, someone shot at him. Hey, hey, yeah. You can see them escaping with that Valkyrie all. But Fart Sniffer 29 could be the uh, eyes that we're going to have on right now. Four hostiles detected on Fujigo. Fujigo. Uh, Hobbit. They say either a smart fella or a fart smeller. So we'll see who's going to come out on top in this little engagement. <laughs> who's going to smell the farts? Well, we already know one of them. Oh, Robin made already on that purple. Uh, we kind of saw that fake news picking between his uh, abilities there. I think one of them was allowing them to regen through smoke clouds which sounds insane to me, but also pretty funny. So I'm not sure which one he went with. Ooh, these triple take shots are landing here. Yeah, Cracked right. a little bit of damage as well. He's going to be very, very low there. Not a commercial hub allowing him to kind of get through. Safe passes usually, but right now it's a bit of a barrel for this fish to line up in. But with that scan, they gave able to see some people through the artillery and that wall. People are going to be taking a lot of heat here. Tay oh, has one kill and an assist. Not sure if that assist was a woman Saints or another squad, but behind that rock, your fate is going to get declared. You're going to just commit the ultimate for it. Just throwing everything at this guy. Four bastards going to go down. Uh, Tay committed the ultimate for that one. Hopefully it's going to be worth it. 14 squads left and 40 players. We're still pretty populated here, all things considered, with how close everybody is right now. It's a lot of people. This is a lot of people to be worrying about. This is a lot of people still left. They are in a decent spot right now. They have the high ground. Just start peppering these people down below with, with sniper fire. Now it's like one of the other teams is trying to get a res on their teammate, trying to get that power back to get any, but any players back in the game. As you need these numbers as He's gonna go for the loot here. He sees a gold. He wants to know what that is. Sees much. No, we're not gonna see that man. It's it. just gonna be him, and he's gonna get out of that. So I'm sure he got something out of it. But whether what he got out of it, we're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see. Hopefully, he at least got a first aid kit, so he didn't end up needing to waste one to get uh, through there. But 12 squads left, and the zone is being so deadly. It's gonna do a lot of damage, like we just saw. You gotta be careful. See one down in the crates there. They're gonna go for it. Some slime down the hill. You see FSA here. They try and move up to the high ground where the Saints were, but the ring is gonna start closing. They're just gonna try and glide around this one. Trying to go through the big spots. Maybe he's going for a little bit. A little bit risky here. But wow, Robin made trying to save Chubb as they took an engagement and went a little bit south there. The little box brawl did not oh. work out in their favor. Gonna try and get a grenade there. They're max level. Oh. They're not gonna be max level for long as he starts to go down here. Chubb is next to follow. It's just Tay, not for long. He's so low. He has no other choice but to pop the shield and hope nobody finds him. 
solo on HP as well. He has the Phoenix kit, but it's gonna be a little too slow. Gonna look for a first aid kit, maybe. See if he can heal himself back up so we can get this engagement. He has his ultimate ready again. He committed it a little bit earlier, but he's gonna get found from a completely unrelated spot. Someone's gonna take him out and he's gonna wipe out the Saints. They're gonna be finished 10th in this round. So, you know, they are playing safe, trying to play for the placements, I think, but not even going to get that good placement that they were hopefully looking for, and especially they're not going to find many kills either. Even just this player we're looking here, three kills, I think that's more than he's had this entire round. So, I do think they pushed up in that last game. They're trying to take a fight and try to make up for those points when they didn't place this high in the last game. So, it just didn't work out. That's the risk for some reward. The risk kind of outweighed the reward there. Let's see if finish as easy as they want to do. Now, we still have eight squads left. The ring is down to its last side. It's going to get some support here. It's going to make chaos from here on out. Oh, while you're sitting in this corner, you got some people around. Do you have your your drone man watching through? But this squad are, in fact, the kill leaders. So we're going to be seeing the lethality that they bring forward the previous squad, whether or not the previous winners of the last two games, or uh, if they maybe they've got wiped out, or maybe they're still here, but just not getting as many kills as this squad has gotten so far. We're going to have to find out. Hopefully, we're going to find out soon as the action's picking up. They're sliding around using their utility. That wall is going to provide nice cover for this team here to kind of recharge back up. They're going to get spotted up by the Bloodhound. The wall's going to go down, but they're still relatively safe. These uh, spikes are not something called like Corvidian, just Ferrofluid. Ferrofluid, yeah. I <laughs> love that stuff. Very cool to look at. I love that they've kind of introduced that kind of idea to this game. But they're going to be forcing down the artillery, spotting them down that rock, spraying them out. Hopefully, they can pushes to make that hold a lot scarier for them, but committing the artillery and the uses is going to be able to kind of deter that push and allow them to sit here a little bit safer. But with that scan, they see from behind, you can see the squad coming up that hill. And then just heal up a little bit so that game starts throwing out that feral food ball once more. Coming out of that corner, they're going to light that one guy up. Three squads left. Conduit already throwing out the shields to allow enough time for uh, Crypto to heal himself up back to full max level he is. So it's going to be a massive deterrent for the enemy squads. Conduit as well, just the catalyst. Go here. This guy's name is Kusuki Bang, dude. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I didn't know. I just need to point that out. It's a great name. But he's going to be on the crypto, so he's going to get this nice scouting from above. Going to go for the AMP. So that's going to be enough of a distraction for him to push up the rest of his team. There's a conduit going back into the drone. Scouting out. They're all behind that rock there. Can have the aim to do it. So hard. Three squads left. Do we know where two squads are? Where's this mm. mysterious last squad? <laughs> right behind you. Uh, it's, has anybody ever shot down a crypto drone? Like I don't think it's possible. It's, like, it's just it's crazy. Uh, but this next squad here, the one that's been spotted out, still fighting for their lives. With that Watson on their squad. I don't remember the other two, but this next one is going to be. The, just hearing where those previous winners of those last two games is already out of this one. So we're going to see a new victor for once here. Uh, something that's usually a lot more common in a battle royale, but that previous team was so dominant. They won the previous team, but this one, they're not going to be around for it. As engagers starting up on these shipping containers, they're going to be able to spot them out and start the pre firing. But retaliation artillery, and they're getting shot out from behind. I think there's a squad that might be behind. I'm not sure if they saw where those bullets were coming from, but Conduit already just recharging the shields of her teammates. Getting pushed up by that uh, Caustic. Gonna be doing a lot of damage, but they recognize that people are behind them now. They're gonna be focusing their attention in front, however. Getting shot out from between the gaps of these walls. It's just so, so ruthless grenade. in these streets. You can't even survive through the gaps in the fence behind you. Gonna be sliding up and out. Gonna see if they can find anybody, but no! The squad from behind is gonna wipe out those two. Just two squads left, and they're not in a very good shape right now. And the last one's gonna go down. Team 15 are your champions, and they're gonna take this next game, establishing themselves as a force to be reckoned with, with the other forces to be reckoned with as well. Yeah, an amazing performance all around. 
They played the high ground very, very well. I think that's what really won them the game there. That other team mm -hmm. down in the boxes, they looked amazing, but they just kind of got pincered there with their final positioning. They didn't really have anywhere to run. I love that, that corner. <laughs> that is a good emote. <laughs> that's a very good one. But just like you said, they really control the high ground so well. Um, I'm already, the Saints kind of got knocked out so early, I kind of forgot they how tenth. they were holding. They were 10th, yeah. So I feel like the thing that they might have struggled with a lot on that one was um, the engagements that they were taking just didn't feel like they had those confidently locked down. It felt like they kind of just fell in their lap, so they didn't have a lot of opportunity to kind of make the most of them. They did have the one pickoff on that one dude who's behind that rock, but other than that, they kind of got snuffed out pretty uh, pretty concisely in those other next ones engagements while they were kind of rotating around trying to find established zones. So they did end up losing out there, but hopefully they just have a bad reputation with that map. They're going to have an opportunity now to prove what they're made of on this next one we're going to be going to. The next three games are all going to be on Storm Point. So hopefully the Saints are going to be able to bring new life in this next one. Yeah, Storm Point's an interesting one. I feel like it's a little bit of a like, more expansive map. Mm -hmm. But uh, it really gets dicier as it gets smaller and smaller. There's not as many yeah. small buildings to hide in as the Saints have been doing. So it might work in their favor. It might work in their favor. It might force them to try and change up their strap. But we'll see that next time. We're going to throw it to a quick break, and we'll be right back with more Apex.
Welcome back. <laughs> As you can hear, we're surrounded by a lot of our peers of chaos. Tay already splitting off from the flight leader, but as we're on Storm Point now, ooh, look at the pretty rainbows. I've never seen that. Wow. Uh, again, all these changes coming to Apex. So many things. Some of them cosmetic. Some of them already game. -time. And speaking of changes, we have a change in the team comp. We have Ramen Maid ah! on the Valkyrie and Chubb taking on the Bangalore. Interesting, good. I wanted to see some changes. Tay now also playing the Bloodhound, playing the Cossack before. I think, like you mentioned, Storm Point does not have a lot of... Uh, it, it's not fortified for line. Of course, you can definitely fortify on it, but the distance is a lot more expansive. So you, you're not going to rely on that as your main strategy. They want to be able to be mobile, be able to gather information and play with that information in mind. Your Bangalore kind of pseudo acting as your defensive player here. The smokes are going to allow you to kind of quarter off sections that you don't want your enemies to have access to, plus the artillery as well. It's not going to be as versatile, or it's not going to be as uh, easy to use as just throwing down a canister of gas and anyone who walks into it gets hit by it. But with the information you're working with gathered from your Valkyrie and your Blood, Account, it's pretty easy to make decisions like that and just make plays around that information you're gathering. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to be uh, caught off guard. They need that extra mobility going forward because they've just been getting caught in these very tight rooms, which work out to get them in higher placements so that when the ring is not on their side, it's just too difficult for them to rotate, especially if there's another team waiting for them like we saw in game two. They try to get out of that house. They're met by an entire firing squad. There's a grenade, a caustic shot, and anything that you wouldn't want coming towards your team. Yeah, I feel like the main issue I was seeing with the side of the Saints is that they're kind of... They're, they're playing like they're not that good. Like, they're playing like I would play if I was in this game. Like, I'm going to make sure nobody sees me, nobody hears me, nobody even recognizes my name. But these guys are really good at the game, you know? They're mm -hmm. really solid. And I think with the lineup that they have in this game, which unfortunately, with through some technical issues, we're not going to be able to see right now, but we're going to hopefully try to get back in as soon as we can. Um, but before we might throw it to a break while we're trying to figure out those technical issues, I do want to say, I feel like with this lineup that they have right now, it's going to be a lot easier for them to play as if they're good because they are good and they're going to be able to make those dynamic, aggressive plays and get those pickoffs that they're so ready for. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting game comp and I'm very excited to see it where it goes. You know, the extra mobility is going to be amazing and maybe just the team swap will play a little bit better, you know, mm -hmm. having everybody be on a little bit more of an aggressive play. I'm excited to see that. And then he make up those points in kills. So going forward, I think we're going to see a very explosive gameplay from the Saints. Yeah, but before we do get to see that gameplay, like I mentioned, some technical issues kind of popped up. But we're going to throw it to a break while we try to sort those out. And we're going to see you guys very soon as soon as we are able to get back into the action.
And welcome back, everybody. We're here back on our first game of Snowpoint. A little bit of technical difficulty right there, but we got it all sorted out now. Amen. Back in the action. The Saints are still kicking here. 18 squads left, 52 people left. Yeah, I'm taking a look at their shields and the uh, little damage numbers in the top right. Not seeing too much different from their previous games. So, although they have a different comp, they haven't had any luck in finding pickoffs just yet. But I was saying a little before, as I was kind of waffling on, I think with this lineup, they are going to at least have more opportunities to find those. It's not going to be as rare as uh, those previous engagements were for them. Uh, Saudi spotting someone out on top of there. There's an engagement over there. If they wanted to, they could just pop the Valkyrie ultimate and go over there. Or they could walk over there and pop the Valkyrie ultimate to get out. That's the flexibility that they offer, that's offered when they change up their comp like this. Before, if they want to get in that engagement, what can he do? Absolutely nothing. So now at least they have the option to participate in these engagements. And that's like I was saying. You know, uh, at least opportunity is we more cruise ready over there. for that. Opportunity is ripe for the pick in here, but are they going to take that opportunity thing? I think they like playing a little Let's bit more way. reactive than active. They like to, they like to react to way. how other people play towards them. Mm -hmm. They like to be a little more on the defensive side. But we'll see. It remains to be seen. We haven't, we personally haven't seen how they've interacted with these teams. But just judging based on what we've seen, it seems like they just sprayed one guy down, let him run away, didn't really go for the chase. Right. And like I said, to be fair, that's how that composition worked in those previous games. That's what that composition was good at. That's how that composition should play. But with this composition being different, they are allowed to play differently and allowed to play in a way that might be more conducive to uh, more stellar results. Whether or not they're going to find them is yet to be seen. But as we're going to head to the aerial cam, we're going to see maybe we can find whether or not those threats in this area are active. Zone actually is pretty closed off right now. With 17 squads left in our absence of this game, things kind of closed down. Chubb and the rest of the Saints are still holding down this area, waiting for any opportunity to come for them, but the other squads haven't made their way over yet. I'm getting deja vu when uh, they were holding down Shrek's Swamp, even the similar building architecture kind of making me worry that they might end up in a similar situation before, but now we're seeing these other squads' actions picking up for them, and they think they might even be inching ever closer to Shrek's Swamp. They're going to have to make their way through that choke point, those two kind of mountain zones in between there, if they want to get out of that zone area, and I believe that's what the Saints might be looking at, or that might be a different I think that is a different mouth uh, of the mountain but either way that other squad is going to have a hell of a time trying to get out of wherever they are right now <laughs> yeah they have their work cut out for them but they do do they have the Valkyrie ult? I can't quite see that right now but they I pretty sure they think do they do yeah. they didn't so use they it be able to get out of this pretty easily uh, I mean, Relative. uh, relevant, relatively, it's going to be easier than if you didn't have a Valkyrie, that's for sure, but while you're charging up and while you're lifting off, especially in an area like this where if people are shooting at you, they're going to be pretty close, so if they're going to use that Valkyrie ultimate, it's still going to be pretty risky, you might at least want to commit a smoke cloud or two to try to mask your escape, but they're going to have to be careful if they do end up in a situation like that. On here, they love just going over to see here. He's having not a good time. His whole team is dead. He is trying to recover this disastrous scenario. He's still coming out from all angles. Gonna pick up the rest. Made them out. They're gonna push. Very close by from the Saints, and that is down. And uh oh, oh, those names look familiar. Those Very are the back-to-back -back winners. The first two games. Yeah, and if there's going to be action going down, then those ones are probably going to be the ones kind of conducting it. But like you mentioned, that action is not too far from where the Saints are. So just as soon as these engagements wrap up, they're probably going to be starting to head over to the Saints way. So they got to keep an ear out and make sure that while they're hearing this action, they're not going to get tone deaf to it because they're going to have to be ready to react to it. Exactly. You have to be ready for anything right now. They're looking at... Chubb is looking good on shields. He's not too far behind. Ramen Maid also not too far behind. Still on blue. Have good ultimate. ultimates. They have every ultimate charge right now. They're ready for a fight. They're itching for it, I can tell. Get to the high ground. Scouting on every angle. He's waiting. Enemy over there. On enemy. And maybe we just found our enemy here. 
It'll be a false alarm. Maybe he's just crying wolf a little bit once it brings some excitement <laughs> to his team's hearts. But in any case, again, the Saints just playing reactive, wait, waiting for people to come to them. I think this time around, they might have a better chance of making it work. Because again, they were struggling primarily with the disengagements. They were taking those fights pretty well, all things considered. But it was just getting around those fights and getting out of them is what they were struggling with. He's just kind of... Stopping the smell of the roses, really. <laughs> I don't think that's a rose. Uh, <laughs> face rose. People, people would not be talking about smelling roses if roses look like that. Um, but it is maybe a space rose. The, uh, the, the immaculate botany on display in this planet is really admirable. But more admirable is Chubb's dedication to holding this door, just staring it down, not a soul to be smelled. Uh, but just like Robin made, smelling those space roses, as you said. But action is only a stone's throw away. The zone is not too far behind the Saints. And in fact, they're holding up a little bit in advance because they want to catch people trying to maneuver their way through here to get back into the zone. Uh, so they're going to be holding up a little bit more. And they're even allowed to do that because, again, again, they have the Valkyrie ultimate thing in case things get a little too hairy, they can try to get out of there. Yeah, they're just trying to find the perfect point. They do have visual on a person, but they don't really have the long-range weapons to take this. I think one of them does have a sniper or, or a triple take, but I think this Arthur is not stop there. Get 16. That's going to be the signal for the enemy team to run away. They don't want to get any action here. see a rotate coming out from our previous here. Team 12. They're heading towards the Saints. Oh yeah, they're jetting right at them and I think they're spawning them out as they're getting closer to the ground. Even if they didn't, Valkyrie's radar is and the Saints are spraying them down. They have the Bloodhound ultimate and they have their ultimates ready to go. They just need to get a little bit closer to each other because they are split up just a bit. Team 12 landing right over against them. It's just uh, the Saints, they need to find their footing because they were split up. They weren't really expecting a dangerous team to land right around them. And of course, they might not be aware of who's landing next to them. They just know that someone's there. So they're not going to have that starstruck awe playing as a factor. They don't have to be scared of who they are. They just know that enemies are here and we got to kill them. And that's how they're going to be playing and taking this execution. Although Tay really feeling the pain and they might be able to recognize now who it is because of how that well placed that shot was. And they're going to start the engagement, taking the fight to them, pushing up through this hut here. Chubb, seeing if he can find anybody through. They're spotting through that glass in those doors. And the Saints are going to kind of bring things back in, try to get into the zone and push together up as a team. But they still haven't found a clear engagement yet. It's still a little bit of an uh, elusive mystery as to where these guys are. They spot one behind that rock, I believe, but it's not enough to make a solid decision based off of it yet. Yeah, Chubb is leading the charge up, and they have some evidence that they find rocket boost juice on the floor there. So Tay knows that somebody's up there at the very least. Robin made on the sidelines. Their Valkyrie playing on the other side of the map because they're so maneuverable. He can jet over to them if they need to. And with that flank, with Robin made sitting where they were, they are able to spot out where those guys are and now they have the information to their advantage they maneuver in a way that allows them to get out of that engagement with their lives this composition already paying dividends for them take to the coast here for the target over there. Out there. open but where they could get shot from most likely not to be shot that's pretty much just open in the area there they can see if there's any enemies in play lurking for them still oh Shot, so that was scary. <laughs> the smoke, yeah. There's one team though waiting to rotate and they get caught out. Uh -oh. Rock the hard place here the ring. He's not getting out of this one. He does. Chubb gets back in the zone. Matei's already down. And Robin made as well. Already out of it. It's just Chubb. Barely alive. They get caught out through that rotation. Through that mouth of the mountain. And at the very best, Chubb can just try to play for placements here. But it's going to be a pretty rough one. You want to stay small. You want to stay hidden. You don't want to get caught out here. So, looks to be... With uh, Tay and Rama made getting taken out, Chubb has been relinquished to the spectator slot. Chubb is now just going to sit pretty and uh, watch this war unfold in front of him. <laughs>
Nice little uh, fly on the wall action. Basically. Awesome. Hopefully he's not wearing a skin that sticks out too much so he can uh, kind of... The camera <laughs> skin comes in clutch. <laughs> you know, this is a situation where you, you hope you don't have a uh, cosmetic that's too flashy. Pay to lose, as they say. Uh, oh, that's pretty good. I'd say so. Wall. I mean, the orange doesn't help, but you can really... Oh, oh okay. Oh, that's that going to be hard to spot because it's kind of behind the rocks there. Wait, zoom out a little bit more? I want to see... Oh, never oh, mind. Never mind. We got a fight happening. We have a fight happening over on that rock. Uh, in fact, I think there's a care package right in front of them as well. Robin made... Or, sorry, Chubb just really soaking in this action. Learning, you know? You learn by observing. I think that's what he's going for here. Hey, he could get a decent placement here. Best case scenario, he gets second. He can lurk long enough. Two teams fight each other. He might even be able to Honestly, play first yeah. in a perfect scenario. If it comes <laughs> down to a 1v1. Realistically, right? it's not impossible. <laughs> Chubb, I mean, there, he's already fourth. He's already fourth. <laughs> Maybe not the way you want to win, but you take, what you, you take it. You, you lost your two guys. They're just sitting back like, man, we don't even have to play this one. You know, it's looking good. So they're not going to get all those kills, but at least they're going to get some points here. The States are kind of just taking this in as we get up to this one. The R team 13. Oh, wait. Oh, team 12 is the other squad. He's going to have to move now, though. The ring is closing. Yeah. He, oh, that's true. I kind of forgot about that whole ring thing. Even if he kind of gets exposed, he gets fourth place for doing oh, nothing. Oh, no, they see him. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're shooting him down here. And, uh... <laughs> Not looking good for him, but Team 12 gonna lose their Valkyrie. It's uh, very rare you see this team bleed already. They made it to the top three. Not surprised with that. Not sure if Chubb's still in this one. I see that one less squad is in this game. Not sure if that down was him. There but. is four, it said three squads left, four people scanned. So that could have been Chubb there in the mix. Potentially, we don't really know. But Chubb did eventually go down. It's just these last squads left, and they are also in the fight. As you can, if I did a little bit of basic math, I'd see that three times three oh, yeah, uh, right. would be nine. That's nine players left. So Chubb did get take it down. What, four, four. Hey, that's pretty, pretty good. good. That's pretty good. Uh, so now Cobra with the bow check, making some clip highlight moments. Perhaps not gonna go exactly the way it's planned. Waiting out that behind that rock sonar scans gonna find quite good mountain information coming around that rock sliding down lighting them up with the car try to shake them down off that rock you never really thought you'd see a fight go down on this rock and now team 12 putting themselves back in the position of team leaders demonstrating why they are such a threat to any team looking to win in these games already now it's down to the last squad and 70s being cranked out already a shield broken smoke's gonna make his position even more obscure. No digital threats are going to be able to see through this chaos that they're laying down. The enemy squad, they still got all of their guys. Team 17 here. They can still put up a good fight. Watson and the fences. I really struggle to understand how you can utilize these to your advantage in an open field, but I'm seeing now how you can make it work in your favor. It's going to be so hard to maneuver around here without needing to stop and break down a fence if you want to get to where you want to go comfortably. And they're going to be able to section off parts of the map pretty easily as well. Going to be popping up back to shield the smoke's gonna get put down pushing up now braving through just charging them straight down not even waiting for a reason for it breaking down that fence and coming around that rock taking the charge right to them now really low no shields left gonna go down paying for that charge but you're giving your team so much room to work with here zona's gonna get inching closer you're gonna have to charge up the shield valkyrie has the, the ultimate not really gonna be able to play as much of a factor here but gonna be right from that boost pad team 12 taking on the last member of that squad and that's gonna be their third victory here tonight as they take this next game Team 12 really making a name for themselves here as they are just consistently playing at the top of their game every single time World's yeah. Edge they got two they're looking to maybe even get two here in Stormpoint with how they're playing but that's to be seen and Props to Chubb for making it that far. You know? <laughs> Lost most of his teammates, a little bit of a misplay, but he managed to, you know, 
camp it out <laughs> and got a decent place in the Yeah, if the zone didn't move out of his way, then he probably wouldn't even made it to make it to second or third. But in any case, pretty funny, but still all the <laughs> impressive that those two squads fought it out there at the end. Now, the Saints only have two games left to kind of recover all the missteps they had in these previous games, and I'm eager to see how they're going to make this work. But they've already changed up the composition. Not sure if they're going to want to shake it up even more. It did honestly kind of work out for them. It just, that last engagement, they kind of got caught out from a spot that they weren't expecting so it is going to work out that they the the change did kind of play out favorably for them but it didn't work out in that last one so i don't think they're going to change it up just yet but maybe they're going to try to play a little bit more heads up yeah i like the team comp i'm just excited to see what they do going forward but overall i think it was just a little bit of bad positioning there they chose to rotate going into the beach beach because it was uh maybe a little bit safer there but it didn't quite work out for them absolutely you see the water you see the serene scene but it is going to be infested with sharks but speaking of sharks don't go swimming away now because we have this next game coming up stay tuned and we'll be bringing you the action And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I thought that was Call of Duty for a second, the way he was kind of holding the gun there. But <laughs> in any case, we're back on Storm Point, and we are on the beautiful beach where the Saints got wiped out before, but looks to be, uh, they're reclaiming it. They, they take it, they bring it as a badge of pride. They're going to land here to start things off. And with that new composition already working so well for them, and again, three wins already, the University of Quebec taking the squads down so effectively. We found out that that was the team that was It's going to be Université du Québec, Artois, Rivière. They are probably yeah. top of the line right now. Our esports at the top. Followed closely behind by SJSU. Mm -hmm. Actually, not close behind. As I see, Q UQTR esports is at 100 points with 44 Jeez, kills. That is SJSU blue. Barely Saints? getting half of the kills and half of the points. Believe it or not, with just five kills, the Saints are ninth. Uh, just good. for context, the team beneath them has 13. You know, oh, so that's how important those placements are. Yeah, it seems like placements 
are the big chunk of the points that you're going to get. If you can play for both, you want to play for both, but you do not want to jeopardize your placement just for an extra kill or two. Oh, so yeah, like the Saints getting that uh, that last round there and able to hold out that fourth place. It did actually end up mattering because they might not be in this position that they are right now. I believe you at least want to try making top 10, if not top 12, to kind of qualify to the later parts of the season. At least that's how it works for most uh, esports leagues. I'm going to assume that it works for the same for this one as well. But the Saints hunting down the Prowlers, already getting a good amount of loot to get things started off. Looks like they're going to be comfortable in the equipment Start well armed. Arrow the safe area far from any enemies right now, which is what you want to see in the beginning, just so you can get all looted up and acquainted. You've seen about four games already so far, so it's in par for the course. So an SJSU flu, and that would be San Jose State University. That second place squad right behind Université de Quebec, Tra River. Uh, apologies for my pronunciation there. I, I was not very good in French class, but in any case, Saints now using that evac tower to their advantage, and they're going to try to reconvene and stick together here because every time they've been split up, they paid for it dearly. Yeah, you definitely want to be with your team. Guys, you never know what's ahead of you, especially in Apex. You can just get jump scared by an enemy team, get picked <laughs> off. Why, fellas? Here, it's a two out of E3 for the rest of the game. As we look over to a close fight, we see. Launcher. Everybody's about at the same level of shooting right now, same level of loot. No one's really pulling away right now. And the replicator, they change things up with this. You can only request one item from them. Oh, interesting. I kind of like that because before, it felt like, at least for me, there's certain mechanics in games where it's like you can get so much from it, but it's just kind of tedious and you still like it. Yes. It's just like, I mean, yeah, I could get basically infinite resources from this thing, but it's just like, That's boring. Name right but now that you're forced to only get one thing, the replicators feel a lot more uh, impactful, I feel like. It's very like snappy now, and yeah. you just want to get to it, get what you want from it, and then keep on going. Exactly. So uh, a nice change, a welcome change, if you're asking me. And of the 20 teams playing here tonight, there is just 19 left in the second last game. The calm is here. The water is flowing. Let's, let's, let's match the tone of the, the serenity area. being surrounded up. Got a high cue about this. You know, yeah. Meditate. <laughs> meditate. Apex Legends. Is is possibly chaotic and <laughs> the Saints squad will win. That was beautiful. Very poetic. <laughs> we'll see if they can take that to heart here as they move out. Found a house. I think we're gonna settle down here. Did you say a hi write a haiku? Yeah, haiku. It's haiku. You said haiku like that. Oh, the anime of that. <laughs> I just, just kind of hit me. Yeah, yeah. You, you should. I meant that. I meant you should play volleyball right now. Ah, oh, but I'm casting. Pass I can't, it back I can't play. I can't go play volleyball with them right now. True. Maybe after this cast, we'll go play volleyball. But speaking of volleyball, they're looking out at this beach and they don't see any people playing volleyball right now. As it's look at the scene. Empty. It's so pretty. I like but, the new sky that they added. It's very yeah, picturesque. Very picturesque indeed. Just like the score lines of some of these teams here. Uh, so, like we mentioned, UQTR, Université de Quebec, Troc River with 100 points and 44 kills, followed by San Jose State University Blue with 46. That's the gap between these top two teams. So a little bit closer with third place, uh, TAMU Maroon with 32. CSUF Gaming with 29. Southern Miz also tying them up with 29 points, but they have one less kill with four with CS CSUF's five. So they're going to be behind them in that score line there. Uh, it's sixth place with 27th. 
EA OSU. Seventh is going to be GSU Pookies with 25. And just going down the list more and more. Again, these scores are a lot closer than that score between first and second place. Again, UQTR has just demonstrated that they are really some of the top of the line collegiate Apex players. And I'm very excited to see what kind of action they bring in store for the Saints. But if there's another squad here that I know is top of the line, it is the St. Clair Saints Academy Apex Legends squad. Even though their score might not reflect it now, as soon as they have the opportunity to demonstrate to us all what they're capable of, I know that they will, and they will put it in full force. So I'm hoping that in this game, at least, they will find the opportunity to shine and put uh, all their skills to the test. But they're going to have to put themselves in a situation to make the most of it first. And right now, with the way they're rotating, the way they're moving around the map, I think it's going to look likely that they're going to be in a pretty good position to kind of take an engagement. Because right now, they're kind of remaining elusive. They're making their scans smart. And they're just playing in spots that they don't have, that aren't very vulnerable. Even if they get jumped right now, they're still in the open. So they can use the Valkyrie ultimate, which maybe not. Because Ramamade is still pretty far away. Kind of just diminishing my point a little bit. Hey, man, I'm trying to make you look good. But in any case, they are still playing as a squad, and that's what matters. They are you In fact, I like that I see Ramen made far away over there because they're using their legends effectively. You want to be able to play farther away from the team if you're playing Doctor because you can. You have the option to because you can fly around and you can maneuver. You want to maneuver. You don't want to basically be playing your Valkyrie like you're playing a Gibraltar. There's no point in playing her in this game. Exactly. You want to make full use of your legends' kit. And I love how they're playing right now. They're playing a lot more mobile than they've ever been. Exactly. They're playing very fluidly, and hopefully this gives them the jump on the enemy team, because it's every time they've been lurking in an area, and an enemy just kind of walks into them and then decides when to make some disengagement. And hopefully, once the rules of engagement are in their hands, they can start the first shot and be able to take this a little bit more. We try and take a little bit more control here to try and get these kills because they're decently placed right now but if they just have one really good game that will set them up mm -hmm. a <laughs> for a lot more points going forward they really easily could go from ninth to fifth if they get out here and again the further up you go the better and you'll never be upset about that taking that ability so fast i didn't even have a dang second to read it <laughs> come on shove give me a break here but in any case they are going to be moving up the mountain and uh, just taking things second by second, moment by moment. No need to rush things. They're going to get their way into the zone and hopefully they're going to get there uh, inscrupulously. They want to get there head down, nobody noticing them, and they want to do it like that. So thankfully, that's how it seems to be going for them right now. Not really getting into many uh, scraps, but I think it's, in fact, Without any real engagements, they already all have purples. I'm assuming that they're able to pick things up uh, in order to make things go their way, but uh, they still have the shields picked up for them here. And I think that's gonna go a long way to make their next engagement work out for them. If they can take a couple fights here and come out on top. That's my position there. They're not excruciatingly far from red. We see a, a another team relatively close by <laughs> Look at that spot. Look at that camo spot there. They even have the flashing red skin, but the plants cover so much there. Yeah, that guy's not going to be able to get spotted out by anybody anytime soon. Now, as we head to the action on the other side of the map, watching the other schools as they fight, we see that there are a lot of engagements, and they're not too far away from the Saints. They're playing it smart, in fact, just trying to gather some information through the door without revealing themselves, seeing what they can spot out. I don't think he's going to spot out anything quite there. If he did, his vision's a lot better than mine. Uh, but in any case, we know that there is some chaos brewing. There's some, there's some fights in the forest. Find a team that looks like trying to scout out this house. And I don't think the ring is in this house, so they do camp this and I love that decision, but I think they're gonna try to rotate over this mountain. They might even have a visual on somebody way up there. They don't get set up there there though, because that's a that's a kill zone, but people sometimes go up there to try and get around. Steady. And it looks like they've scouted somebody out here. Oh, corner potentially. I have a feeling. 
Go for it. You're gonna try and clear this little tunnel out. The way you start an engagement goes a long way to determine how you're gonna finish it. And the way they're starting this one, spotting them out before they can spot them out, is gonna go a long way in making sure that these are coming out on top of this, this one. Deep Six, they're down a player it seems, but they're not out of spirit yet. Crashing right into the wall there might be uh, reducing your numbers, at least in the uh, brain cell capacity, if that was real life. But thankfully, it's a game, not gonna have any wall collision physics here. Playing Vantage though, one of my favorite uh, legends. I didn't think I'd like her so much, but what really sells me is the Scouter, but might not be able to sell a victory for you there. You're peeking up against the Saints. Beast of the Hunt is pop, scanning both of them out, have full information on them, and they're able to chip them out with those shots. Now, I feel like the Saints might be tempted to go for that push, but they're actually going to disengage. They recognize this is just a lose-lose situation. So what? They might find a squad of two guys. Those are not going to be much of a threat anyways. They're just going to get out of here and get back into the zone as fast as they can. Does Angle also falling on the great as they drive the rail and drive you guys? Got out of that just <laughs> time and those jumps. But I don't think I doubt it. I mean, what reason would they really have? Again, you want to save your resources for the engagements that really matter. Um, the squad of two, not much of a threat to you. You want to make sure that if you're going to use your, your commitments, you're going to use your abilities, it's going to be for stuff that's going to keep you alive. And they just wanted to get out of there because they'd probably still be fighting right now if they didn't leave. And if they're still fighting, the zone's getting even closer and closer to them. It's just it's just bad all around. But they're going to use that evac tower equipment piece to just get out of here as fast as they can. So well utilized. All the things are going to be able to get out of that sticky situation and land, heal back up, and get things going for them once more. But bad spot, I believe, though. yeah, they're going to get spotted out. The Saints are going to lose Chubb here. But if Robin May can win this engagement, it'd be huge for them. But in the zone! He is gonna get taken down, and the Saints are gonna get knocked out. This squad here, Team 5, are able to make the nothing out of the Saints but some equipment boxes. That's all that remains of us. Fart sniff on Team 11. Saints are gonna go down 11th place. Now it's just the rem remnants of these 10 teams left. We're gonna see what they have to offer and bring us next to the conclusion of this game. Again, this is the second last game. After this one, the Saints are only gonna have one left to really make their mark. Nice little setup right here. Crypto alt come out. This right here. I think it's very successful. Yeah, and marked by Vantage there. I didn't get to pitch my point on Vantage. There's something so. Ooh, Yusu Saka getting a lot of good clean shots with that G7. Um, but like I was saying, like just walking around the zone with your scouter out, just looking around. The ability that you can, the fact that you can just do that is just so fun for me. I love doing it. Whether or not it's competitively viable, I'm not sure. I don't really care. But uh, that Vantage using her ultimate so effectively to kind of not only do damage, but also get some information information by the way that you can tag your enemies and see how they're moving around after you shoot them. It really goes to show what kind of defense they might have or how they're just going to be strategizing. But back tower is going to get committed. That squad of two that the uh, Saints were fighting a little bit earlier on, the bank war is going to go down and it's up to this vantage to go at least recover the banner, but might not even go for it, might not even be worth the risk as there's still 10 squads left and you're just going down potentially. That is going to be Team 10 out of it. it but this next squad pushing out and oh, getting away. Yeah, a lot of squads going down. In the blink of an eye, we went from 10 to 7, and that's the effect that the zone closing can have on a game like this. More closure of the zone left here. Very, very narrow. Final ring. Shots. Guns. Keep through. Take control here. Because get hit, but the shield gets broke actually. 
Spot down. Wingman, auto reload thanks to the mythical nature of it. Try it if only if you could shoot the stationary fence. Eventually gonna find it. Athena 11 alongside Fart Sniffa leading the charge. They're gonna try to reposition on that high ground to make this fight a little bit easier to take for them. We're in such a small zone with already still holding on to seven squads. Gonna use that evac tower to get to the top here. And uh, the Watson triangle cage strat gonna not really work out in your favor there, but it's gonna go down and it's still Team 11 trying to fight for some scraps of high ground. Gonna push into this zone here, not even caring that there's a gas cloud right in front of you. You wanna see if you can find any stragglers left in this hut. With one second until the zone starts closing even more, the chaos is still ensuing. Gray is gonna go down inside of this chaos, and now the Valkyrie as well. Browser, Bowser going down, and still Team 11 leading the charge through this smoke. Just spraying through, you can't see a damn thing, but you gotta find some of your shots regardless. Use Aqua is gonna fall eventually. Bangalore not too far behind, and far sniff of the last man standing for Team 11 is still gonna go down. Now, Team 15 is gonna be carrying the torch forward. Four squads remaining, and a lot of death boxes, a lot of them with gold in it, in fact. They're gonna be able to revive their teammate but they're still not in a very good spot as, oh, but with the Kraber, maybe you can put yourself in a good spot. Slipping through with the Prowler and trying to get as much pickoffs. The cage is gonna go down, trying to get inside of there, maybe. Smoke is gonna make this a little bit easier. The Watson, not too far behind, allowing this push to go up. Is that a sword? Is this, is this sword still in the game from Final Fantasy Clap? Because it looks like he's holding one. It's, a, it's an heirloom. But, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Ooh, scared me, but. Bangalore with the shield down, gonna have to take a second to recharge. Bang uh, the Watson is gonna be taking cover for them, but the huge crack with the Kraber taking it a max level, trying to get the flank off, sliding in behind them and mowing them down. There's not a hope in the world they have to defend against you. They still haven't even turned around because what can they do? They're being pushed from all sides. They have no choice but to succumb to the pressure and there's only one squad left, but they're looking in a very much better position. They're getting flanked themselves now, coming down from the heavens. Not the kind of angel you wanna see, it's the angel of death coming for you. Your soul is mine. This conduit chasing them down all the way up to the high ground. Team 4 are your champions and they're going to take this fifth game. Taking them to this last one. FSU is going to take this game and they're going to take it with style. Crispy Bacon <laughs> making the comeback. Making the comeback from the previous games. We'd love to see the success. Yeah, you're seeing teams that maybe didn't have the best overall run here so far but have just consistently been in the top five or so and now just getting that one win is going to accelerate them even further to the top absolutely again these comeback stories these fights these engagements in those last moments apex legends really is a slow boil of a game and when the climax comes and it's all down to you and your squad to really bring things forward it's always exciting to see how you can accomplish that so very Excited with how that last game went down, but we only got one game left and the Saints still haven't found their footing yet. So hopefully we can see them on that victory squad in this last one. Yeah, it's the final storm point. It's the apex of all these games. It's the peak. It's going to be one to behold. I'm just excited to see it. I think we've been locked in. We've seen all the different team comps. I don't think we're going to see much changes, but I think we're going to see the Saints be very scrappy, be very aggressive and try and get as many points as they can. Desperation is one hell of a motivator, and if you're desperate for anything, the Saints will be right now, as in the Octane Collegiate League. It's a lot riding on the line here, and they want to make sure that they can show us what they're made of. So as we get ready for this final game of Apex Legends, we'll be right back, and I hope you stay tuned.
And hello everybody and welcome back today. This is our final Apex Legends map on Stormpoint. And we do see a little bit of a I like what I see. Up. You see a conduit. That's gonna be a major pick because I've been seeing maybe their main problem is just their shields have just been getting shredded over and over and that little extra bit of survivability is gonna help them loads going forward. Ooh, okay. I really I really like what I'm seeing here. First, you know, Tay, such a strong supportive and defensive player for the Saints. So putting Tay on that conduit makes so much sense to me. They are gonna opt to pick up that Bloodhound again. I think the way that the Saints play around the Bloodhound knowledge is really solid. Uh, and the Bangalore also still you, you wanna have at least some kind of frontline or or at least someone that helps make your engagements a little bit easier. But I remember I was talking to Tay, at least when to it released, saying that he doesn't think he's that, she's that strong of a character, the, primarily the passive basically being useless until you're losing, um, namely one of those things. Uh, but unless there's been some changes to Conduit that I'm not aware of, I, I still do believe that she's still a pretty solid uh, left round because of the way that she allows you to control fights with her ultimate and the ability to just zap somebody's shields and make them all that tank gear, it really does make a huge difference, especially when you're at this level of play. So excited to see how the Saints utilize this legend in this last game. Yeah, it's looking to be a good map. Conduit is still very strong. And overall, they love this little beachside area of the windmills. They've landed here every single time. And for good reason, it's worked out for them about every single time. So forward, I think we're going to have a good game ahead of us as long as they don't rotate into a bad spot like we've seen a few times like the, I think it was the first match on Stormpoint they just were having a pretty good game just rotated the wrong angle ooh they found a car too yeah it's gonna be some nice mobility there yeah so this is gonna make them I mean you don't need a you don't need a uh, Valkyrie when you got wheels well I guess it doesn't really have wheels but metaphorical wheels figurative wheels to keep you mobile and moving around so I steering do wheel Sorry? There's a steering wheel. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you can just take a steering wheel with you wherever you go. It doesn't really give you wheels necessarily. But in any case, I do know that at least at a competitive level, a lot of people have kind of said that the vehicles are not very good. I guess because it kind of just reveals where you're going. You know, it's a loud noise, kind of basically a siren as to where you are at all points. Um, I disagree. I think they're cool as hell and fun to use. Uh, I think that maybe the Saints might agree with me. Not sure if they're going to want to take them with that, take that with them as they move on through their adventure. But they're not even thinking that far ahead right now. They're just still focusing on getting more loot for their uh, future battles coming up. Yeah, they're just getting all looted up, and I think we're going to see them just try and group up right now. We're seeing Tay run over to Chubb, and that conduit pass is so crazy. How, just if you're running in the direction of a friend, you get an insane speed boost on command. It, it's crazy. Yeah, and uh, you know, maybe Tay disagrees, but I think that it is a pretty valuable uh, passive to have. Basically, there's, there's a champion or there's a legend. Now you got me saying it. <laughs> Damn it. There's, there's a legend whose entire identity revolves around getting move speed, you know? Move speed is valuable. Uh, so I think that there's definitely something happening, even if you have to be looking at a teammate to do it. If you, uh, if you cheat things out a little bit like me, you can, you can definitely find um, speed boost where you probably shouldn't be getting them. But they're going to be pushing up this hill here. I think I saw some bullets flying. Not sure if those flying at the Saints or from them, but it looks like Roman Maid might have found somebody to uh, turn into a victim of their pressure. Tay, not too far behind as well, going to be laying down some bullet fire, but I'm not sure if they're going to really be able to make anything come from this. Yeah, it's going to be tough. And one thing I do want to point out about this comp is under the right conditions, they should all be able to get a speed boost. Bloodhound ult, True. speed boost. Bangalore passive, if there's bullets flying around, speed boost. And Conduit just has the consistent speed boost from the passive. Just chasing them. Be a very speedy comp in yeah. the right scenario. So I think that can come a long way in making their rotations even better. Again, with Valkyrie, you can relocate, but you do kind of have to sit stationary for a while. But with this one, you're mobile all the time. Uh, but Tay, getting cracked there, trying to look for an opportunity to jump in. Zapping Chubb, a little bit of shield to make this engagement all the easier for him. And that shield is definitely going to come in handy as it's going to be taken out already. That would have been real shield gone instead of the temporary one from Conduit. Going to use that, uh, 
long range cannon to relocate. Shove is going to be out of here already. Not sure if he's going to plan on coming back or not, but it looks like the states are going to go chasing right after the team and second together as always. And uh, they're going to relocate, opting that that fight probably isn't the one that they want to be taking. Still 19 squads left, a lot of opportunities to find kills for this game. The states just want to play things safe because the last thing they want to do is get eliminated early in this game of the match. Yeah, you don't want to get eliminated early. You need that later placing if you want to score the points as you see Team 4 first to be eliminated as it seems. Not, uh, was Team 4 the one that won the I last game? I think it was. I was about to say, I feel like Team 4 might have been uh, the last team that won FSU. So uh, that's crazy. They got singled out very early on. Yeah. Just got caught off guard. That's a big player out of the game. Maybe the Saints have a chance at winning this one now. Saints. I feel everybody has equal chance of winning these because again in this league all the teams here are so fierce such strong competition It's just a matter of how you deal with the cards the cards that get dealt to you and uh, Right now I feel like the Saints are really just something feels di am I crazy something feels different about them right now Right, I, I'm not making this up Am I, am I not just narrative, creating a narrative for my sake, my commentary here? I feel like this is real. I feel like I'm, I'm feeling something different here. And I think that they might have some good chances to make some stuff go down in this next and final game here. They're gonna see some people rotating. And I think they, yeah, they wanna get that high ground before they have the chance to. Uh, so <laughs> even if they're not gonna take the engagement, at least they're not gonna get shot down from that giant rock right in front of them. So making a very good decision and a good call to try taking it over before they have a chance. They can't quite get to the top of the rock though. Oh, but! But there is a team. This blow down out. They know both teams see each other. Uh oh, high ground. Comet's gonna have to try and get out of here. here. Conduit. Rotate over, gets Beautiful. Shield. Look at that conduit. Bringing him back up to full shield temporarily. It is gonna dissipate after a while. But at the very least, your, your Bangalore doesn't have to sit still and recharge while your team is still fighting. Gonna have at least more. It is gonna dissipate now. So if you're gonna sit there and suck your thumb to get back to health, you're gonna have to do so right now. And that's what everybody on the team's gonna have to do. Thankfully, with the Sonar scan, they know that they're in a safe spot to do so. The rest of the Saints are still recharging. Tay is back to full. Chop now as well. The Saints are using their Util to try to get things pushed up, but the Peacekeeper is going to find a spark, but it's not going to get the kill. Rama Maid is going to get shielded up, but Tay's next to follow, and Chubb already getting mowed down, sitting behind the shield of Tay, but it's not going to be enough. The Saints are going to get 17th in the final game here, and that's going to be their hopes of finishing in the top 10, dashed away. They finish off that last one in 11th place, and with the 17th placement, they're not going to be able to find any more with now the team that's won three games already. Université de Quebec, Tra Rivere. <laughs> already we've seen what this team can do. So hopefully we're going to see them uh, bring some more action. With 15 squads left, they're going to use the Valkyrie all to reposition. They're already going to be able to spot on some of these squads. They're taking a little bit of fire, but it's still hard to shoot off. This guy like that, they're going to be able to get a perfect reposition and pull things off just a little bit better. Cut peppered in midair, but this rock in the coast. This is the good spot. And right now it's a little bit open, but they do have this nice rock to play around. Back up that they lost in midair. Now we're seeing gunfight in place. Already on range gunfight though. Shots a little bit, but not it's just a little bit too far to get from the AR. Hostiles that building on the left. Oh! Pick, but that's not going to go over them. That's going to be 5 eliminated. So we just got that kill. Let's go there. Try to get bigger fish there. Um, Coming on the rock here, Mokai. The footprints don't lie. People were here just a second ago. You might even be able to see where they went if you're following carefully enough. These teams are doing a good job making sure that their shields are up. No conduit on their team yet. It feels like everybody's constantly at full with these shields as well. They're going to get some levels, so they're going to have a lot of utility with their abilities as well due to that ESP system that we were talking about so much before. Bar Sniffer, 29, and the rest of Team 11 are going to be holding things down over here. And uh, that's going to be them trying to fight for this spot on the map. And uh, I think they're going to have some success here. With that caustic, it's going to be a little bit easier for them to hold it out.
And uh, that's going to be them now trying to see if they can find, I think. And that river would be QT, uh, UQTR. Uh, they're still probably swimming around over there, so I think they might be spotting them out. I think possibly behind that rock. Uh, so Bronco Crimson, Bron Bronco Esports Crimson is going to be Team 11 here. We're going to be watching them make this hold uh, in this building. Yeah, I think it's a really good spot to be in right now. Even though the zone is going to push out eventually. Wow, they actually find someone with that skin. Uh, not going to be able to use too much. I don't think he's expecting to find anybody with that one, but he found someone. Take it. Exactly, you gotta Carpe DM seize the day and try and seize the kill as well right now. French fight here. This is gonna be TTU Red. Let's see, but being consistently placing in the higher placings, but their team just unable to get a, a large amount of kills, it seems. And just being a little bit more middle placing here, but they're looking to change that right here with this game. And going back to the Bron Bronco here. They are in an amazing spot right now. They have the high ground. They have the caustic. If someone flies up here, you're just going to get <laughs> stinked out here with these gas canisters. And the smoke is going to cover anything. With the, with the name of Far Sniffer 29, I'm really reconsidering what I'm being those gas canisters. <laughs> but I'm not going to think about that too much now as uh, they're going to be trying to reposition themselves. Being this tower's a double-edged sword because you have the high ground advantage and you have so much area around you, but it's going to be a little scary to try to get out because you don't have a Valkyrie or anything else that allow you to reposition easily. It's just a big squad there but now we're seeing uh team one uh, gonna be fighting a lot of bodies down here but fiddle dude's not gonna get out of that very easily uh tamu maroon gonna be feeling the heat as fiddle dude is gonna go down but axi is gonna be pushing up around this corner you can see a bloodhound around this corner but he's gonna get out of there really quick and he's gonna elude him the hunt is still on for at least another seven seconds but he's not gonna be able to find his court just trying to hold it out here now, but Mark has not been found and the hunt is still on, but this time they're in the prank. Exactly. They are in a really rough spot right now. They have to try and escape like a gazelle in the wilderness being chased. Alright, we're coming back to the bicycle. This is gonna be another team here. It's gonna be UT Dallas, Dallas Apex right now. They see someone flying using that bow check trying to get any aerial damage, arrows. but they're not going to be able to find it. Save your arrows. That bow check can get a lot of work done. You don't want to be trying to shoot an arrow or shoot a bird out of the sky. It's, uh, save that for the ancient hunters, okay? You, you focus on the guys who come out here. You look for the deer, not for the eagles. Now, they're spotting some people around those rocks. Still 13 whole squads left. That's going to be 34 warm bodies running around this place. 63 going to get cranked out there. A nice clean body shot behind that rock. I thought that would have been a headshot for sure. But still washing it down, seeing if they can find anybody trying to escape over there. It's only a matter of time before they get out of here. So as long as you keep your eyes on it, you should be able to catch one of them. But these pre-fires are going to be the name of the game. They're, in fact, they're going to be the ones that have an advantage here because they can go around and pre-fire. But they can't pre-fire them in return from this spot here. That would just be a little risky to try. Yeah, they can't really do much from that angle. But looking over at some other things right now, it's... Looking very, very dicey as we get down to one of the few last few circles. It's going to get tighter and tighter here, but it's Let's very there. stressed going forward. The Bowser trying to find someone here, trying to flush this team out, maybe even debating using the ult here. It's not going to happen as we flip over to UT Dallas. They are in the sewers here and having the battle of their life. They have a lot of angles to cover. They're trying to not be pushed from every angle but they know that there's teams lurking up high below anywhere you could look there's a team to beat them there yeah team seven here's gonna be us or uc sd esports uh ut dallas was the team we were just watching before the bows were on it but in the sewers here just like you said the smoke is gonna be pouring through and they're gonna be waiting for bodies to emerge from it like the wild hunt begins 
seeing the bodies emerge from the mist, it's a sight to behold, but Weenus is gonna fall. It's just Tensi and Seatrocity. They're gonna use the Horizon Lift to get out of the sewers, but they're gonna bounce right back in, trying to get across to the other side. Not gonna work in your favor. That ceiling there, just playing a little bit of, uh, putting a damper on their ability to try to reposition here. As we look over now on this top of this roof, there's still a lot of fighting to be done. And in that crane over there, like we saw that previous team with uh, Fart Sniffle on it, uh, with Bronco, Esports, Crimson, it seems like they still might be holding it. But with this team now, they're still just holding on this rooftop. And Lenny Orange is going to be our protagonist for the time being. Still fighting over on this crane. Let's see if we can find any bodies there. But, ooh, I think that might be Fart Sniffle there, playing that Bloodhound, trying to find his mark. And the smoke's going to be put down. But now we're over here underneath. We're just like traversing through the different zones, the different dimensions. And we're going to be trying to go up with the horizon lift. But no, they're going to opt. That must have been a trap. It's too good to be true. With Temple Cherry making a really strong placement now. Uh, at least a lot better than the previous ones. They were 19 before. So they probably haven't had a lot of success up until this point. Hopefully they can find a nice placement for themselves. But we're still back with Bronco Esports Crimson. And they're still going to be holding down this crane. They decided that it would be worth trying to Dude, maintain. Hmm? I was going to say, it's a shooting gallery though. They are just yeah. all lined up here. They have this little corner they can retreat to, but not for long as the ring is going to close closer Woo! and closer. <laughs> that was the like the entire lobby there. Literally. <laughs> they, but that's, a, that's the benefit of being up here, right? You have the high ground. Obviously, everybody knows where you are, but it, it's like you're, you're the eyes of God, you know? All they can do is pray that you don't decide to look at them with, uh, without, with disdain and strike them down with lightning. Plus, smite them. <laughs> yes, smite them. That's the word I was looking for. But we'll uses Aqua here with the Caustic at any point. And the Valkyrie almost goes down. Would have been so disheartening if their boost was put down by Bronco Esports. But they're still fighting strong. They have a good uh, chance to even make contention for first place here if they are able to hold this down. Because, of course, they're on the high ground. Everybody can see them, but it's not gonna be well not anymore i was gonna say like you can look up to the skies and start shooting at them all you want but you still have so many people around you to worry about you know you <laughs> so can't chaotic. spend your time doing that but you can use the ultimate you gotta find the conduit take you down one now two taking two squads out it's alacrity and they're gonna be getting shaken up just a little bit but they still have a healthy amount of shield and they can still keep fighting through this area and try to find any other survivors of their onslaught they are unleashing all their strength right now, descending from above. And wow, right away, there's someone in his face. He's gonna have to try and dash out. The speed boost uh -oh. from the Bengalo is gonna be huge. He gets another team. Those two, those are two teams down. There's only four squads left, but he's gonna go down, down, all down to useless Aqua, and he goes oh, down as well. No. It's gonna be Team 11. There's only two squads left. <laughs> it's gonna be Blossom, FBS, and Pobix. That's gonna be EAOSU being one of the last squads remaining in and Cobra. University de Quebec, Troch River is gonna be trying to make sure they can get their fourth victory for tonight. 103 points already, EAOSU with 33. This really is a David and Goliath story. Can EAOSU prove that they have what it takes? Getting a shot on him, I believe he either had no shield or had a red shield with that red color on that uh, hit marker there. But there was no shield if the, the sound effect was yeah, right. That, so it was a very meaty it, sound effect. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, but with this in mind, it's a little bit of a bunker warfare. Trench warfare going yeah. on right now. You know, who dares cross oh, no, man's no man's land? land. Yeah, wow, we're, we're <laughs> in sync here. One of them's making the trek across. You're gonna smoke, and the missiles kind of just trying to smoke him out there. But they already know that the Bloodhound is behind that rock. They're a little bit split up. If they can make the most of this and try to make an aggressive play, they could even try quartering them out. But another one's pushing up. They have no choice here because then they're forced into no man's land. The, the mustard gas is pushing them out of <laughs> their trench. And the nades are coming out. The artillery is oh, gonna go down. No. And it looks to be 
damn near impossible for universe uh, for the uh, EAOSU to get out of this situation, but they're still fighting, they're still holding strong. The artillery, the rolling artillery, the strategy being employed, World War One tactics, <laughs> more of it's coming through, just forcing them off. But they're honestly not in a bad position, they still have good health, they're getting pushed down, and they're fighting the wingman shots that they can make a man, grown man cry. They're so beautiful. Blossom FPS is going to be taking a lot of heat for that, going to have to recharge, but so is uh, University of uh, Quebec. They're having to recharge as well, and they're getting closer and closer together. The zone's going down, and it's going to come down to this. Who can get on top of the rock? Spraying down Cobra. It's bouncing off. He's going to find the kill. Going to knock them down, and that's it with their fourth victory here today. They're going to be taking this one in style with a gut-wrenching finish. EA OSU almost took it down, but that last fight was immaculate to witness. And that's why they're on top. Université du Québec en Trois-Rivières is one of the Woo. best teams I've ever seen play Apex. An amazing showing for them. They deserve the win today. Absolutely. Winning four games. What a way to end it as well. A beautiful showing all around. Yeah, and absolutely a shout out to EAOSU. Uh, they put up a one hell of a fight there. Really, I, I did not think they would have had even a second chance there once they had to get pushed out into the open, into no man's land. But they did manage to hold and, in fact, force uh, University to take uh, to Quebec, Tra River <laughs> to push into them and kind of counter artillery and it all fought down on that rock. Moments like that, all the adrenaline in your system must be going overdrive because you're you're going to be panicked you have your enemies rushing into you and you have nowhere else to go it really is a fight or flight moment that's the human condition and that's where you really see what you're made of and that's not to count out blossom he was in full bloom there just hitting those wingman shots that was shot incredible. after shot he was playing amazingly but you know uqtr just absolutely was out of the water yeah. the entire time. They just played so cleanly and so consistently. They deserve the win overall. For sure. For, before that last one, and well, actually now we're going to see the updated score. They're going to finish off today with 129 points. And if you have to guess what second place has, I doubt you'd say 75, <laughs> but that's exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, SJSU Blue in second place with 75. And EAOSU, I believe they were like maybe 6th, 7th, 8th, or ninth, somewhere around yes. there um, before the last one. But after that last Last one it's going to shoot them up to third place so very impressive indeed and you can see the rest of the scores lining up for all the other teams and the saints are going to be 11th place finishing off with 23 points and five kills so probably not the result that they were looking for today but it's definitely not the worst we possibly could have gotten and you got to see that those placements matter the most out of anything as they only got five kills overall which is even less than some of the kill uh, the yeah. the teams below them, they just consistently place you know fourth, fifth, sixth. You know one not so great. The eleventh place really shot them down to that probably eleventh ranking. Mm -hmm. Finished seventeenth in that last one, I believe. Yeah, were. those probably really sent them down the bracket. Mm -hmm. Go. Those placements matter so 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 much. Like Southern Miss, just ever so slightly ahead of them there on the points, just yeah. because of the placing. So it was a hard fought day. Trying to recount here how we kind of started things off versus how we finished. I believe the Saints really did kind of come into their own. Uh, their their play style before was a lot more reserved, a lot more patient, and maybe too patient if you ask me. Their first hold, I believe, was their strongest one, where they were in the Teen Titans Tower and everyone was kind of scrambling around them. But they had the same problem that they ended up having for basically the rest of the match, you know, or best of the rest of the series, where they are able to hold down a point they're able to get into a good position but as soon as they try to get out of it they get shot down it happened yeah. for them the first game second game third game and then the last three on storm point they mostly just kind of got caught out through flanks or trying to get into a good position they get caught up with somebody who's already there and kind of shoot them out as they're trying to re you know find a good place to hang up their hat and call home so they are not going to be able to find the placements that they're looking for today but they still played overall impressively and my favorite part probably chubb hiding out yeah. there <laughs> uh, behind that rock to get from probably it was like 11th place all the way up to fourth so their placement honestly would probably be a lot worse than it is right now if not for that play exactly that's apex you got to make do with what you get and that's why they still placed pretty well even though they had a few off games you yeah. know 
But overall, it's been a great day of Apex, Daniil. I've had such a fun time casting this one. But that's not all we have today, is it? We also have Valorant later today, starting at 4 p.m. versus Northwood. So you don't want to miss that one. That's a big game. Absolutely. It is always a joy to witness the Clash of the Titans in Northwood is definitely a Titan if you know anything about the collegiate Valorant scene, but the Saints definitely are in and of themselves. So if you like Valorant, even the slightest teensy tiny little bit, you'll definitely not want to miss it on the action starting at 4 o'clock. But that's been Apex Legends. Personally, that was the highlight of the day for me. <laughs> I love to see Apex on the stream, and I'm very glad I got to cast it this time around. And it's been a pleasure to cast it with you uh, tonight as well. But as we're going to get ready and wait up for that Valorant action for o'clock, you know we're not going to sit here on camera and talk to you until then. So <laughs> we're going to throw things to a break, and we're going to see you guys later on when that action gets underway.